Hello everyone and welcome to another Sky Tears Day Tuesday. We're here with the Skeleton crew, of course. Steven and I have been together since the beginning of isolation. We're here for our final Into Ashes preview. Into Ashes is the next expansion coming out for a lovely little game that we have fallen in love with called Sky Tear, if you're unfamiliar. In the not so distant future, we're gonna be doing a kinda, of, if you're new to Sky Tear video, I'm excited about that, but that is not what this video is. This video is us previewing one more card from that upcoming expansion. Subscribers have already been charged, so if you signed up for that, you should have gotten a notice. Uh, tracking will become active on that when we have the product ready to roll out to you, and you will be getting it in the very near future. I'm super excited. We get the Ashen Pass map, and then of course the Into Ashes expansion. A whole bunch of new cards, one of which is, you, I'm, I'm not surprised, you save blue for last, and you probably save the best card for last, that way you I, could tromp on yeah, me. Yeah, I don't know if it's the best, but it's certainly, I think, one of the more notable cards that has come to the game. Uh, just a quick clarification, all subscribers, so uh, whenever you're processed, you'll see that charge come through on your credit card if you're uh, checking those kinds of things, or if you're like my wife, then you will suddenly get it in the mail uh, in a couple of weeks, and that notice, the actual email notice goes out uh, a little bit before the product actually ships, usually about the week that it's going to ship, you'll get the, it's processed. That gives us time to uh, fix any failed payments or credit card problems that have happened, make sure everybody's on the up and up, and then ship everything out. Weird. It's like a piece of floor. It's like the loudest piece of floor I've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about a card for the blue faction, Leothan. Which, I don't know if it's going to, there, there's going to be, so you're, you'll know immediately if you're the player for this card. Are you the player for this card? I'm probably the player for this card, yes. However, it's a conditional card. It's a three mana card and it's conditional. Well, three mana is always good for a lead. But here's the thing. It's three mana and it's plus one modifier. So already you're in a good spot. Like Ice Wall, I love for that reason alone. I also love it because nobody ever sees it coming. Nobody ever sees the Ice Wall coming. If you caught our game... It's yes, like the Spanish Inquisition. Dude, last week our game was off the chain. Yeah, was That good. was one of the best games of anything that I've ever played in my life. And it was certainly probably the best game of Sky Terror uh, that I have ever played. No doubt. It was it was really good the back and forth and like the, that last the maneuvering turn, on the end yeah it was really absolute good. absolute chaos man it could have gone either way you know it was just ins and outs strikes and gutters is incredible uh, so let's just let's just kick this thing off by previewing the card right now so it is a card called guide it's got incredibly beautiful art you can't see it Zach because we printed it out three mana plus one on the modifier check out that effect though if you would please uh, could you read that for us yes it says you may play this card only when none of your heroes are exhausted move target control token two hexes that's right so what's your initial what's your initial take on that so it's an action you have to play it on your turn yep you also have to play it before anything exhausts that's right um, so you can't, and I like that they did this. That's a great balancing mechanic, right? Yeah, so you basically can't surprise your opponent at the end of a round. They think, you know, like, because if we, can you give me a table shot? Yeah. Uh, so if this first control point here is... Let me in, get a, hold on, middle. we got like detritus Yeah, everywhere. well, I just dumped all your stuff out for you. <laughs> oh, thank Anyways, you. Anyways, <laughs> uh, so uh, the control token has to be within three of a nexus to do damage to it if you win. So technically, if it was here, you, you might be a little ahead thinking that you're going to, you know, be... You're going to be doing some damage to mine. Blast action, I go. I drop a you know a dragon punch to clear out all your minions. I play this card. All of a sudden, it moves two. Now it's within three of yours. That's right. And that could be pretty devastating, mm -hmm. um, like beyond devastating, actually. So making it where I have to basically start the turn this way, um, you, I guess you would have to. Well, I guess you could play it on your first activation, even if you weren't first, which is good. Yeah. So. As long as none of your heroes are exhausted. Yeah, I think that, you know, if I'm looking at the ideal time to do this, maybe I've defeated an opponent's hero, so they're down to three this round. I'm the second player, so they've gone with one of their three models, they only have two activations left, and then I spring this on them. Mm -hmm. And it's like, all of a sudden, what... Because, you, you know, a lot of times I'll push one, and it's like, I feel safe over here, right? Yeah. Nothing bad can happen. You walk over, you clear... You know, first off, you push it to, you come over, you clear my minions, and it's like, and... If I already went with the hero who I thought, you know, maybe would be here within three, and it's like That's they're the suddenly not within three. That's absolutely the key. Yeah, so like there's there's a lot of really mean ways to use this. I think having to consume your three resources at the top of the round makes this um, a very costly card. But it, it's great for lead. It's a plus one for attacking. Those stats are phenomenal. And this is, it's almost the kind of card that like you run one of to make your opponent honor it. 
sure. sort of a level. Um, because again, like if moving it to a lot of times, I'll be three away from a hex. Mm -hmm. So like even weirdly, it's like uh, even just moving it towards you, moving it back can kill a bunch of minions. Might and actually send it the be, other be way better. So again, you have to do it first. That's the biggest restriction on this. If you draw it middle of the round from defeating a hero, you can't play it. Uh, but even then, it's a great lead card. So like I, I think this is a very playable card. I don't look at it like I looked at Doom for Karumo and think. Oh my goodness! Like this is a a staple, mm -hmm. but I, I definitely think we've we, we also had the other. There's one other card that moves at one, right? Yep. So yeah, now, now we have two. But trample has to have it empty. So basically, there's got to be no minions around it for you mm. to move it. So this is actually with minions around. So and they're not going to travel with the control token either. So another, I mean, another crazy thing about this card is like if invasion is the win condition. And you've got to get both of your hexes to the other side. I mean, this is a game-winning state for you now. Yeah. Like, first action, game well, over. Honestly, if I, and there's <clears> been so many times where it's like, this one moves here and this one moves here. Mm -hmm. So, like, technically, uh, that I guess... That could be winnable if you trampled, if you if you could clear the minions on that, that number two. Yeah, but, like, the first thing is, like, I'm going to move this two, and then it's later you get rid of all these minions and trample. Like, blue has a way to do that. And obviously, the re reality of that is I could see having a list that has, like, two of this in it and, like, two tramples in a single hero. And then it's, like, literally this hero is the hero you bring if, if that win condition happens. Mm -hmm. Like, literally, it's, like, because it would be super good in that one win condition. Yeah. Um, and Joseph's saying it's tested at end of round. I hadn't looked at that recently, um, which still, I think, makes it really good, even with that reality. Because basically, you could just guarantee that if you were going to win by one, you guarantee that it's there at the end of the game. And all you need to do is not let it move. So you need to tie control, and that will end the game. So that's an inc I mean, and just thinking about, like, so let's say that, you know, a standard game, let's say we might move one here or maybe the other direction. Like, there's a strange world where, like, you're here and you're contributing, let's say, five control or something. As your first action, you run over here, you lead with a card. I roll over here and I just move it too, like this. Now that's a weird play, right? You know what's a really Super weird play fascinating. that I just thought about? Yeah. Can't do it. Why not? I don't think you can. Uh, uh, I think anytime you move control tokens, it has to be in the direction that, otherwise, the game breaks. There's no way that works. I don't know. <laughs> Look up move control and token. And when in you the move it, book. you don't snap the minions? No, you do not. Hmm. That's only when you spawn minions. Mm. So in the spawn minions phase, it would definitely work. So you can't move it into the dome? No. No. Are you crazy? No. So it's similar to like how whenever them to spawn a minion, mm -hmm. it doesn't tell you on the card how to do that. You follow the rules for spawning a minion. So it has to be on the nearest control token, et cetera. Anytime you move a control token, it has to be in the same same way that it's uh, you know, ruled that you do it in the rule book. Noted. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, it's insane. <clears throat> uh, so this is Guide. This is a blue uh, Leothan card. Active only. It's got to be your first activation of the turn to play it, which I really like. Otherwise, this could get absolutely bonkers, where it's like, you know, last minute, ah, out of nowhere, we're going to move this control token. Everything's going to change. So I'm glad that there's a tightness of design here that is allowing counterplay, where you have to broadcast this at the start of your turn, and then your opponent has to scramble to react to what you've done, which makes a ton of sense for me. And I hope that we see this mechanic utilized in for future cards that are very strong or very um, game-changing, turn-changing, that always allow your opponent an opportunity to react to it. That's one of the best things about games like uh, Destiny or Netrunner, right? Like you have all of these moments where you kind of know what's about to happen, yeah. and then it's up to you to figure out how best to prevent it from happening. Really, really cool. Man, uh, so good. So yeah, what do you guys think? Let me know in the, let us know in the chat. Um, Johan Sand from Gothenburg, Sweden. You make my evening so much better during this uncertain time, and you got me to put my Arkham collection to the table again. Keep up the great work, like your content. That's awesome. Great, Johan. Thank you so much. This is also Daniel saying it's a really good on the one lane map, which is 100% true. Which makes sense, because this is releasing with the one lane map. And that's going to speed you up. So, Blue, again, playing, you're playing, Blue is playing into this control the lane strategy that I really like. You're going to be spawning minions, you're going to be controlling minions, you're going to be pushing control tokens back and forth. So it makes a lot of sense that if this is the part of their color pie that's really important to blue, that they get a card like Guy that allows them to just straight up move that control token. Combined with Trample, yeah, technically you could do some insane stuff, but I'm, I'm curious. I'm going to put it in my deck today and see if I can actually get some use out of it. 
And like I said, even just popping it out of maybe towards you, away from like a five control, now you win by five, so you moved it back two, but then you kill up to five minions and move it five forward. Yeah. It's like, there's such play there. So I'm, I'm excited to get it on the table. Yeah, and I, I think there's, it's worth iterating, uh, reiterating the value of a three one. Oh, so good, yeah. 100%. Just, just fundy is good. Yeah. Um, 100%. Yeah. So what do you want to get into today, Zach? Let's uh, talk it out. I'm yeah, going to so build some decks to kind of rebuild here. I'm basically going to swap in guide to my usual build. I'm going to change some things up because I've seen the light a little bit, I feel like. Especially if you guys haven't checked it out, there's new improvements to the deck builder on Sky Oh, my Sky goodness. Tier. Oh, you my wanna, goodness. You want to switch to my... Hold on. Let me get this full screen. I got you. This is, uh, it, this is close. This isn't the exact list that I'm running today. Uh, but I just want to show this. So, like, this is a this is the biggest thing for me. Used to, you could only see, like, three of your heroes at a time. Yeah. And this is on my, like, 13-inch laptop. So this is not a giant screen. Uh, but you can now literally see your entire list, which is so helpful. Like, before I'd be deck building, and it's like I have to scroll over to see if I've included a certain card or yeah. how many I have. Um, and then I haven't explored it yet, but you can also basically draft your heroes and look at your deck stats based on the heroes you pick. Oh, it's so good. And then, I had to build separate decks to do that. I know. I had different yeah. lists going. There also used to be a limit on how many decks you could have built, and that's gone, by the way. Like, there's just no limit anymore, which is good. I, ran, I capped because I kept doing that. I was like yeah. four and four so I could see what was going on. Um, and then they also have it, uh, I, haven't, I haven't looked at it, but I think it says, like, there's analysis and simulation here. So I assume, hand simulator, I can draw five I'll or click six. It. Click it. I'm going to see what happens. Uh, Does wait, it work? Hold on. I have to select my heroes first. So, like, okay. check this out, right? You pick your four. See the oh stats my gosh. that change? Guys. Yeah, and then look, I'm going to hit six. Boom. Test I hand. love it. This is an incredible improvement. And I will now spend so much time in this deck builder. Yep, and you can reset and just keep... Keep looking at hands. I've spent upwards of thousands of hours on that Arkham deck builder. In yeah. Netrunner, I used to do test draws in Netrunner DB. Uh, like, un like, unreal. You wouldn't even believe it. Yeah, and so like what I did is I have my two heroes in this particular list that I'm going to run every time in the middle. So literally, like my average mana on this half is 1.75. My average modifier is a 1.34. When I switch to the other side, my average mana cost goes up to 1.78. A little bit more likely to lead from the top. So the right side is my control list. So I have more lead from the top. I have a higher cost curve. That's also where I have my mind palaces. Surprise, surprise. But when I go to the left, right, my attack modifier goes up. Nice. Because that's my offensive And list. you have your middle heroes or your core heroes there? Yeah, in the middle. Working with? Yeah, the two that's right here. That's pretty slick, man. They look kind of back-to-back, -to -back too, there. Yami yeah, they're, and they're hanging out, dude. And Very nice. What's crazy, so if you want to flip back, we can. Sure. Um, so I, the list I'm using today, um, and again, I modified it because I included um, some of the previewed cards. I'm about to sneeze. Uh-oh. <coughs> <coughs> ah, shake the camera. Uh, <laughs> lots of different stories. It's all okay. Uh, um, <laughs> But I last I'm do an office or a studio tour at some point. Yeah, I took a picture of this monstrosity that we have set up to get this angle. That's a long. I will put. I'll post it. All right. So <laughs> last week I played um, green red, and yep. so what I realized the weekend before that was that there are six heroes. We talked about this a long time ago, but there are six heroes that are green red and six that are red uh, yellow. Mm -hmm. I keep wanting to say white, but it's yellow. And so last week was green red for me. This week I'm doing red yellow, mm -hmm. and I'm just using the six heroes that you can use from the core set plus the first four expansions. And it, if, if you're just now starting out, I recommend this so strongly. Pick your favorite color uh, of theme and then choose this, the secondary color, run those six heroes, um, and then just look for cards that basically seem like they interact with those things, which is what I've done. Um, and I'm really excited because I, I finished the first lore book this weekend. I've been, I've been working you, through man. it. That's very and, nice. And uh, unfortunately and fortunately, the first time I read uh, the name of, I believe it's Shafafi. I call him Shafifi or Shafifi. Uh, anyways, his name's Shaf Shafafi. <laughs> and if you look, can we get the, the, the uh, camera angle on you this? this is, it's yeah. one of my favorite models that got painted. Uh, like, awesome community. Oh, wait, hold on. Hopefully you can uh, yeah. see this. He's got basically sand coming up around him, um, and he just looks magnificent. He's also got the star details in the back. Damn, the back. killing it. And then the, the sand in the bottom has like, you know, like the like fake gold looking stuff? Yep. It's got the, that, those sparkles going on. A little it. glitter going. Anyways, in the lore book, I had no idea, but he is a time traveler. Oh. So he uses the, uh, his, you know, sky tear wisdom to channel, uh, he's a mage. He travels back in time to basically save the future. Uh, we've heard this story before, right? I've but heard this before, yes. Essentially, All he, time travelers he, are burdened he by comes this. back as a prophet from the future and is basically like Ekrit. 
is the one who will save us. Oh, so she uh, is Goku. She's the chosen one. Huh. Uh, basically. Nice. Um, and she is supposed to be the one that unites. It really reminds me more of like Aang from Avatar. Mm-hmm. So she's the, the wind uh, character, and it's like she's um, she's supposed to be the one that unites the uh, the four elements. She's that, not uniting you today. She's going to tear you down. Yeah, well, I'm here to train her. Uh, you know, Shafafi. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but I really enjoy that. I'm looking forward to the second lore book, uh, and I, I finally got through it. Uh, things I learned, another thing that I learned is... Um, Tell me about my favorites. The Earth minions. Mm-hmm. Um, those are all... Basically, dead spirits possessing the bones of the ancestors. Did it talk about why they're carrying ice cubes around? No, I think it's rocks in in the actual <laughs> uh, thing. But in your world, uh, maybe Astrida came and had the long winter has uh, <laughs> the whole long winter's happening. It's the Astrida Freyhill relationship is also really interesting. Is there really a long winter, like a Game of Thrones level? So the Leothan thing is like they're trying to have a permanent winter. Oh. Um, and uh, hmm. Freyhill's not ex- necessarily. She's the queen, Freyhill. Uh, and she's not necessarily on board with that. Flower, she's the flower. Mm-hmm. You know, well, yeah, nothing uh, grows in the winter. Right? Yeah, uh, but their kind of strat is like if dress? it's all ice and frozen, it's like Russia. You can't, you know, yeah. Napoleon couldn't quite make it. You can't get in there. Can't beat the winter. That's yeah. the problem. Okay, so they think it's the ultimate defense. Yeah. Yeah, well, they're not wrong. They ain't wrong. Right? Ice wall, right? Am I, I mean, right? How, yeah, we've seen ice walls many times. Zeal Jeremy, uh, the real champion here in the chat, got three copies of the Sky Terror base game so I can teach students at my school and start to run a league. That's the fantastic. Game is great. Zeal Jeremy, you what, are the best. What level uh, of school are you teaching? You. What, what's, your, what's your student, uh, I guess, demographic or age mainly? Yeah, Dan's saying that the sand was super fun to come up with and paint. Well, Dan, you nailed it. Yeah, that, absolutely. The sand coming up on him, like, that's just so cool. It's great. I mean, it's great. And he's kind of like the Assassin's Creed mold is kind of the idea behind that one, I, I've heard. Yeah, he's got the little... It's just good, man. Yeah, the other thing is, you see this with uh, the cards that have him on it where he's like kind of disappearing? Mm-hmm. So the other part of this is he basically worked he's with... He's the Time Warp um, guy, then, huh? He worked with... Uh, yeah, he is the Time Warp guy. Uh, Sethuru, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, or it was Habarat. I don't remember. I feel like it got his hands in a lot so of pots. he basically w- worked with him to make the connection to leap through time. Mm-hmm. But then now to go back, he needs someone from the other side, mm. which is a problem. That was a risk. Uh, mm. And he, it's either Sithiru or Havarat. It basically made a deal with him that they would, they have the answer and they'll help him. But the, the Great War has started. That's a big thing. So Ekrit was out abroad trying to learn other, other ways from uh, the green. And what's the green guy that she was learning from? Talit from like Kotlik or? It was not the... Kotlik. Kotlik no. is a king, but he's not a, not a nice Akla, guy. Wouldn't Akla, surely. Akla's like a weird little blowgun. It may, you know. It's one of the, it's one it's of the. It's gotta be Sakali then, or Neliklin. Neliklin. With all the arms and yeah, the masks. Yeah, so Neliklin, oh my he God. He seems wise, yeah, of course. So cool. Neliklin apparently is, uh, no one really knows, but like his origin story is like he's the oldest person on Earth. He's and been he's around just for like the, the Uber God, right? Like because he's got the arms coming out from behind with the different masks of the different things. Yeah, um, pretty good indicator. Yeah, uh, but he recognizes Ekrit as like some someone special basically, and is going to teach her. But then the Great War starts, so she has to go, mm. and she's being chased out by Kotlet because he doesn't doesn't trust her and like all this kind of stuff. It, it's fascinating. There's a, there's a whole world here. <laughs> Your face, you're just like... <laughs> I'm going to have to read this, yeah. man. It, there's a lot, uh, and there's a lot of little details, so I'm sure someone, if you're more familiar in chat and I'm getting anything wrong, what feel did, free. What man? Yeah, it's Ben, like exactly. Watch him a bucket. Benny Jezzerit here. Uh, okay, so what I'm... Hey, I've got, a, I've got a revelation here, man. You know what I'm doing? You know what's different? We're about to lose? I'm definitely not... That would not, be different. That de- <laughs> would be different. I'm not going to lose. It was a backhanded compliment <laughs> of the highest variety. <laughs> I'm going to keep trying my best not to lose. But I'm, I'm no longer scared to run things that require a flip to do their thing and also not run the minus ones. I'm willing to accept that level of risk. And one thing that makes me more acceptable, uh, makes it more acceptable to me, is if we look at like a cutie, for instance. I love this model. I love everything about this ability. I love how foundationally great it is. You see the thing, you get plus one armor. If you're next to the illusion, it can attack a minion. can do everything that I want to do in the game. But obviously, if you flip one minus one, it's a real bummer. Yeah. So I'm actually starting to put things like presence on a cutie 
so that that predict two, like at the beginning of the turn, I can use the predict two, give her the control bonus, and then make sure I don't hit the minus that one. That makes sense, because it means you can mitigate the risk of actually missing with those minus ones. That's correct. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't run the predict two card that just predicts two, because at that point, it's kind of foolish to predict, waste a card just to make sure you can kill a minion whenever you could just probably run a card that kills a minion. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I don't quite see it as like a, but with presence, because a cootie probably wants to run those control bonuses anyway, it makes a lot of sense for me. Yeah. Also, speaking of a cootie, she had a really crazy story. These like, what, yeah, tell those me are like about floating it. swords, like magical swords that she has that generate mm, light. Yes, That's why you more. can see the background on her is like all this like mm -hmm. lit up swords. Uh, just kind of bizarre, honestly. Also, just, the- Just floating swords is kind the, of the, the, the theme The Nuptons are easily like, the uh, least liked yeah. people. The desert people, yeah. They just think they're like high and mighty. Yeah. And smart. Okay. Like the Martells? I don't know. They didn't like think the they Lannisters. were high and mighty. Yeah, okay. Because they, aren't they like the old, the old like we understand the world and we're the new gods kind of thing? Because Ethereum thinks he's all godly too, right? He thinks he's, he, his t subtitle is the Sky Master. Okay, yeah, that makes so, sense. So, you know. Yeah, nobody likes, the, nobody likes the, the person who's not humble. All right, let's go into the board here and take a look at uh, some ideas. So, you know, Oh, you're in the ideas phase. Well, it's not even ideas phase because I already <laughs> have the cards I want to run. It's just about where to put them. Mm, that's not that hard. And that's kind of fun. So I, I actually, I just picked out basically six times seven of all the cards that I want and uh, now I just have to decide where to put them on these. So, like, Akuti gets the presences, that's for sure. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna make, like, these two. These two will be my, like, forever, my forever uh, friends. Because, I, you know, we've got, like, weird fans and weird swords. I feel like that goes really nicely together. Uh, so, like, critical cards to me, things that are always good. I'm a huge fan of swiftness. Don't even talk to me about why I shouldn't be. I just won't even listen. See, look, there he is. There so he crossing. is, yeah. Just Turn into sand. I mean, look at that beautiful, yeah, beautiful it's so art, cool. too. I love this. Uh, first off, Zeal says he teaches 11 to 13-year-olds. That's phenomenal. Uh, I, I started really, we started really getting into games at about that age, mm -hmm. and uh, I definitely did not have a supportive environment uh, for those things. So the fact that you're teaching uh, kids of that age in general is fantastic. His friends were awful, particularly. N mine? Yeah. No. It wasn't really friends related. <laughs> it was parentally related. That is also funny. Ian says, I'd be down for some story time with Zach because he reads the lore book. LOL. <laughs> Maybe we'll do an audio book. Uh, I, you know, I scolded myself for not having Strength of the Pack last time, so I'm going to put it so in there. It's so good. Yeah, it's so good. All those all the minion cards? What? How, how devastating is, how devastating is uh, redirect to you most of the time? Always? Because migraine is always good. It's like my kind of card. It's always good. I mean, I, always. I feel like redirect is one of my top five cards. Yeah. Because either direction. If you're trying to kill a minion and I have a healthy hero next to it, particularly with armor, I send it my way or I send it to the wrong hero. Mm -hmm. um, or the other way around, you're about to hit a big old attack on one of my casters and I can just move it over to a minion. Yeah, it's too good. It's too good. Okay. Let alone, All I right. mean, it also is not talking about the target of space cards. Yes. Like the oh. AoEs, yeah. Yeah, or Sorry. like dodge. I have to target a hex and move to that hex, and so you can change the target of that hex. Like, it's just the counter to so many things. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'll do it. You think, yeah, strength of the pack. I, I, already, I already made that decision last time. So I'm going to, just for, to make sure that we can maybe see something new, I'm going to throw a couple of guides onto uh, my main stack here. Boom. This modifier is get a lot better. So let's throw some guides there. And then I like to, I just, I can't get away from this two, three, uh, basically three X cards. So I'm gonna do something new, something fresh. So you do two of three cards? I do two of the three mana cards, yeah. yeah, yeah I was on like I every list that I build is two of the three mana. So look at this, now I can run two plus one three mana cards in both stacks. So I like that a lot. That's like straight up normal numbers. How very, about that very nice beautiful. wall though? Uh, let's see, there were some things here. Aaron says, back to the two-lane map again, is this your favorite map? I think so. I, I think the reason... I just want to play the actual map that I'm going to play on for most, like, events. I think the reason that is, though, is because of wind conditions. 
to be honest. Yeah. Um, I, I think that all the wind conditions make the two lane map. The two lane map's also big, bigger, so there's more going on, but it's it's the wind conditions. Because even the three lane map, the only way to win is the Nexus, right? That's right. So the one lane, two lane, you, you only have one wind condition. Um, and this is just way more variable. Like we saw it last week with the, the new wind condition, it was like crazy how different our games went based on the wind conditions. Um, Absolutely crazy, yeah. and I uh, liked it. Dice Hand says, what miniatures are you using for the towers? These are the towers that came in the original OP kit. Uh, we painted them. I painted them, actually. <laughs> Very. I just used contrast paints. It was, it was awesome. I did it on the phone for like two hours, and then it was done. <laughs> Easy. Uh, now would be the highlight fancy phase. We just haven't done that yet. Maybe on a future uh, paint day. Chasm, probably. Jay Rutley, have you guys considered doing a Learning Sky Tear or some kind of basic introductory video now that you all learned up? We actually Perfect. have. We we're going to be doing. We talked it. about that today. Yeah, we're, we're going to be doing that. That's uh, that's coming up. So we're actually. This is kind of the end of our official sky chair. So we we previewed a card for every faction. This is a, kind of the encapsulation of the last, the final kind of like. Okay, we feel like we've kind of gotten up onto the platform now, where we kind of know what we're doing. And so then we're going to actually take a, a break for a couple of weeks. We're going to uh, put together the resources we need to do a proper learning video, and then we're going to probably come back and stream that and then kind of just do consistent SkyTerra streams for the foreseeable future. But we need to take a little bit of time to actually put something together that's going to have the pops and the resources that we need uh, to make sure that we have the rules right, too. Because some people think you can move a control token wherever you want. I don't, you know, you gotta... You I'm gotta... here to ask the questions. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, <laughs> thank you. What up, Trasmillion? <laughs> All right, so what are we gonna do on Estrada? What do we do, call the pack? Is she a pusher? I don't know how any of this works. The mermaid? The mermaid. <laughs> the mermaid herself. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Just uh, run the heal cards. I am definitely running the heal cards. I think I'm going to run three Nourish on her. Because Nourish <sighs> is so good. So annoying. It's so good. You can just heal. Does Nourish let you target someone to heal? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so like redirect on a Nourish is the bomb. That's true. Ah, uh, you got a Nourish? How about you Nourish me? Can you Nourish? Is it friendly? No. I target here, yeah. You got it. You can make it happen. All you got to do is redirect it. Run the card. And it happens. If I redirect your Nourish on a My King, it's like that's such an insane play. It's devastating. Yeah. I like do you it. have redirect in there? Yeah, I do, of course. I'm going to get to experience it. I'm on, I'm on red yellow, so that's like I said top five card. I'm going to open this door. All right. Yeah, it's getting a little warm in here. Because it's like 100 degrees outside. <laughs> Why is Steven sweating? Ah, it's awful. You're not really sweating, in case you're... No I mean, sweating. I am, so I'm constantly sweating. Most people are. You drink coffee? Do you get sweaty when you drink coffee? I mean, I sweat profusely when I drink coffee. Really? Mm-hmm. That's unfortunate. I guess. Unless you're into that. All right, where's my other Nourish? Let me find that and let's ben dive Sweeney, into this thing. Ben uh, Sweeney says, what are your favorite combos to play? Uh... I like red, green, and red, red, yellow. That's the two. I've been red the whole time, so that's uh, I like them both. They're both very different, which is really cool. Uh, Enrico, so this is the last Sky Tear stream for the next two weeks, possibly for a little while. Yeah, I, I don't know when the tutorial will come in, but uh, we have the Into Ashes coming out. Everyone will be getting that, which would be sweet. Uh, we're gonna take a little break, and we'll, Ashes will not Ashes. That's a different game. Into Ashes. Uh, Sky Terror in general will be something, Steven and I love this game, so you'll keep seeing it on the stream. It just might not be Sky Terror's Day Tuesdays every week from now on. Migraine's going in. I found a slot for it, and it's in Astrida. Boom. Astrida says yes. Alex Becker says 90% humidity here in Ohio today. Chasm. And then I'm going to build Eckert the same way, man. It's going to be three shoves. Your favorite and mine. Three shoves and then the uh, time warp. Brett Holton, I was building Call the Pack with Estrada earlier today, and it seems on paper like it's a bit of a no-go with her passive. Have it you guys is. found that to be the case? Yeah, the key with it is like, it, it's th this is why deck building is so amazing in this game, is that, yes, Estrada particularly doesn't necessarily use Call the Pack well if you use her ability even early on. Like, you're just not going to be two minions down most of the time. But why are you bringing Astrida in your draft? If you're bringing Astrida in your draft because there's a heavy push objective focus, then you want those cards in your deck regardless of whether or not Astrida's lane is the one that's playing them. Yeah. So like, you, you think as a hero first, and then you think, well, actually, 
you know, three-fourths of my list that's playing this card is not going to be this hero. So then you become like, well, why am I drafting Estrada? Why am I drafting Korjoff? Why am I drafting Shalabi? It's like, okay, I'm drafting Korjoff because my opponent brought more than one tank or they have high armor values across the board. So I need cards of the Korjoff that are going to be good against high armor targets. So that's my reason. Maybe I only draft Shalavi if it's a blue mirror match. And so maybe I bring in three charms on Shalavi so that I can, if I see my opponent's playing Leothan, I can draft Shalavi and have some anti-blue tech. There's a lot of different ideas for how best to deck build. Uh, and it will, it will drive you insane, basically. Uh, so I, I can't help you because I'm also being driven insane by it on a daily basis. That makes sense, Zach? Yeah. You on the I same mean, page? It's a, the thing about it is like I feel like I understand the game enough to play it pretty reasonably, but also there's so many layers to this game that I, I don't think there's a clear-cut right answer. And I don't think, or there might be, but I just don't think most people understand it. Yeah. I do, I'm not. I'm not willing to say that. Like I really get it. Yeah. I mean, I get it. I can. I can. Fun, like you said, I can function, but I don't know that I get it. You know, like I'll probably look back at these streams in a year and be like, ah, it's like some of our early unboxings for like Netrunner or something. Yeah. Just like, why did we think that? And you know, when we go back and watch those. It's like you look at cards that eventually everyone understands are insane. Yeah. Right. And it's like, it's like oh. I think account siphon's pretty good. <laughs> Read busted. <laughs> it's like oh, I don't know. Zach, I'm not even going to build these other two because I'm just going to run these four. That's the way I'm playing today. I still believe that you can actually just build four and just play that for like 20 games and then figure out why you're losing and then that's when you start thinking about five and six. I think that's totally fair. And I think if you're new, building four is the place to start. All right. All right. What's up, Nick? Nick asking, what's the future of the streams? So uh, nothing. there's nothing really uh, changing. I'm just basically saying that like this is kind of the end of our discovering the uh, the essence of Sky Terror, I would say. I've been streaming it every week for, what, six weeks, eight weeks, ten weeks? No, way more than that. We've done, this is week eight of previews. Week eight of previews, right. So That doesn't count the, the four, three or four weeks before that. So we're, we're probably on like three months solid of, of weekly. In the first week, we did three or three streams, I think, for Sky Terror? We did a lot of streams. Uh, so basically what we're doing now is now we feel like we have a pretty good grasp of the game. So we were just basically, we got to share our learning process with you, which is normally done off camera uh, before we do like a proper uh, learning video or something that's an actual like how to play video. So now we're going to go into the lab basically, um, get all those resources ready, and then we're going to come back in and do uh, like a an how to play Sky Terror video that's actually... Something good to point new players to. It's like probably 30 minutes, 45 minutes long. Covers all the basics as clearly as possible. And it's just going to take a little prep time to do that. So in the meantime, we're probably going to put some other stuff on the stream in the uh, next few weeks. Uh, and then we'll get back into Sky Terror in, in a couple of weeks. Because then Ashes is coming out. Everyone gets to discover that and, and play that together. And then we'll come back in and uh, start in on our weekly streams again, I'm sure, in, in no time. Yeah, and part of it, too, is the... Or the it just might be once every couple weeks or once every other the, week. The release whatever. cadence for Sky Terror is supposed to be roughly quarterly. Um, so we're, you know, at some point, we will have played out most of this stuff. And then at that moment, right, we're only getting new models and cards once every 12 weeks or so, which is, isn't, that's definitely enough, by the way. That's about the correct. Um, yeah, and I think I could play without anything new for the next several years. So mm -hmm. there, there's, <laughs> we can go for a long time. Uh, but essentially, like, we'll probably continue doing some previews leading up to and then playing with all the stuff that comes out afterwards. Uh, so I, my expectation would be that you'll see Skytear really regular on the stream across the board. But uh, weekly uh, is a is a huge commitment for we're, any game. We're also trying to figure out our like live stream schedule, and now that this seems to be the new normal, um, getting into a sustainable place with us, just from a, as a business perspective, like how much can we ultimately stream? It may be the same amount because like we're we're looking at it and it's like, well, this is going well for us. I mean, we're we're really happy with where things are, and we're happy yeah. to be able to connect with people every day. Um, but you know what does that look like? So we're just we're just thinking about all sorts of things right now, um, and Skychair will definitely be on the on the docket in the future because this is the probably the best thing to happen to games for me. 
since Netrunner. This is definitely uh, currently my favorite game we're playing, right? Like, yes. Uh, now, that said, I'd, I'd love... I love of these models every time. Oh, my gosh. I love Champions and Arkham, but that, the, this is my like competitive heads-up game. This is it right now, so uh, it, will not, it will not go quietly into the night. I'll say that much. Okay. Are you ready to do this thing? You want to draft? Let's you do it. Go? First, let's uh, flip the win conditions. You ready for this? I'm ready. And I, I sleeve them so we could shuffle the proxy of the new win condition in. Very nice. Um, do you want to pick outsiders first? Uh, we have yeah, to do that technically yeah, before yeah. we know we what's pick going on. on uh, for our list, for our respective list. Um, let's see. Who's weird? They're all weird. They are. That scourge is the weirdest. I don't. I don't want that scourge. Jay, yes, you're spot on. If you're building four, you're really just building one. That's right. Just one list. The old-fashioned way. Way I learned. Anything catching your eye? I'm going to take one of the Ancestors. Okay. I'll take the... We could tell we could both take the same Outsider. We just would do it I'm secretly. I'm going to take the uh, Dark Vigilante. Hmm, nice. I like this Outsider spread. Cool. I'm going to put them up here like... I'll just leave these guys. I like having them just watch. Just watching. <laughs> they were watching. All right. Yeah, so shuffle them win up. condition. So I, I have the proxy in here. If it hits, it hits. If it doesn't, if we'll it move hits, on. If it hits, it hits. Let's go. What do you guys, anyone exploring anything interesting out there in terms of Sky Terror decks and whatnot? whatnot? Um, <laughs> ben Sweeney. Oh, that's fantastic. You guys Vince. can't show new good games. You already got me into Marvel Champions. Subscribe. Sky Terror, subscribe. Arkham Horror, soon to be subscribed. And Netrunner. Ben, are you, are you better for it, though? Aren't you happy about it? I mean, those are, by the way, when you're on your, when you're on, saying your last dying breath, uh, I don't, you don't say a breath, your, your last words... Are you going to say, I wish I hadn't played these great games? I'll bet you don't. No, I, those are phenomenal games to be playing. So This, this is a great uh, hobby to be a part of. I don't feel of. bad about that. All right, here we go. You ready? Yeah. Win condition number one. Onslaught. Onslaught. Ooh. Defeat three heroes. Hello. Sky Terror Master. Win control of the dome three times. Okay. A little bit of one, a little bit of the other. Tactician, win lead of a control token six Ooh, times. This is going to be a so good game. I love this spread. That, that's a really good spread because there's if you just defeat three heroes, you win. But then the other two are heavily control-oriented tokens. Uh, and it's really it's kind of a game theory because it's like if you pick a list that's really good at control. If you know, I know. And I'm going after assassination. It's like that's crazy or vice versa. Or if we're both going after this, like we both go after assassination. I don't think you're going to because you're playing blue. Assassination just happens. You know? Assassination just happens. One does not simply go after assassination. Nick, I appreciate that comment. Sam, we made this strange time so much more enjoyable than it could be. Good. Have. Dan, uh, trying six attack heavy characters. Seeing it's been interesting. Uh, Jordan, been playing through the colors. A few games of green versus blue, then red versus yellow. Next up, two color lists. That's great, Jordan. That's a really smart way to start, too. You kind of learn the factions as you go. <clears throat> Red Green Frenzy deck for the TTS League this summer. This is Jared Pine. Beautiful. Love it. All right, you ready? Yeah. Red or white on the flip? Yeah, Gunshot Killer uh, doing voiceover uh, games. I would love to get back into that. This would be a good one for it. If you cut out the thinking time and then do yeah. commentary. 20, 30 minute 20, games 30 with minutes, commentary. Yeah. It'd be yeah. sweet. I might do that. Uh, red. You know what would be fun? What's that? If we edited the game into 30 minutes, mm -hmm. and then we did the commentary live with the game playing, that would be fun. And we could read the chat, because people would be watching it with we us. We could label it a Let's React video. We react to ourselves playing a game of Sky Terror. It doesn't have to be our game. But what if it was? It'd but be it like be. Inception. And then what if we reacted to the video of us reacting to our own game of Sky Terror? But really, though. We'd go viral. Picture if we had done those, because we always do those commentaries in one take. But mm -hmm. if you have live chat happening, and you're like, it's like, it's a different vibe. That would be really cool. Right. Uh, not the, the red side? Red the or solid white. red side? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll take that one. White. You want outsider or choice? Or uh, first or second? First is almost unequivocally better for assassination. Yep. It's worse for control. So this is a spoiler alert if I let you pick. Like, if I, if I pick first or second, it will tell you what I'm doing. 
That's true. Am I trying to kill you or control you? That's true. Can't do either. We'll fail at both. I'm going to go first. Oh, yeah. We all knew it, as if that was a confusion. You also like first because it's seen as weaker. I sure you're, do. You're stealing my, you're stealing my strategy. This is why we got along, playing yeah. games together. All it's like and business. Let's yeah exactly. Just, let's let's go the hard way. Just win doing weird stuff. <laughs> Can you win doing weird stuff? That's my country song. Uh, okay, then I'm gonna take uh, Lord of the Ancestors as we agreed upon. You can pick mine. I'm not picking yours. You That's can. why I brought this one. Well, now you know the win conditions. Now, Lord of the Ancestors there? has the uh, move target control token one hex. So between Guide and Lord of the Ancestors, I can just push one three without even thinking about could it. Could be bad. Or it could be great. First draft goes to you. One hero in, please. Yami, my old standby. I just don't get tired of seeing him, really. I love this game. Draft okay. to you. Draft to me. Dennis says this. I don't know what this is, but this. This. Absolutely this. Boom, boom. Mermaid and Jacuti. <laughs> Mermaid and swords. Floaty, floating swords, yeah. All right, next we're going to get Habarat. Mm -hmm. He's my placeholder for Akimo since I can't play him in my... Dude, Habarat's the jam. Yeah. He and Akimo are pretty similar. Indeed. Akimo may be better. I don't know. Uh, they're just super similar. His way of the rogue thing is just kind of weird. It's, it's awkward to use. Uh, to one more, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As his customer. I chose to go first, right? You did. That was me? That was you. It was me, Kichi. Mmm. The old man. I'm bringing the heat, Uncle Eero. Gasoline. It is the gas list. <laughs> All right, let's throw uh, Kinui over here, and let's throw Eckert over here. All right, last pick, Sithuru. Give me mages or give me death. I'm a little sad. I, I almost went the other list just to get Shafathi on the table. Yeah, why didn't you? Because of the win conditions. Mm. I have redemption planned. Redemption. Jay says traditional 45 degree car layout. <laughs> That's right, Jay. I switched. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad. I don't want to be the only one harping on it. It makes me seem like a... Just okay. remember, overly concerned. I'm doing this for you. What is this? Why is this here? Normally the math's there. Yeah, man. No wonder, because it's like it's like Should unfinished wood. Yeah. What happened there? I don't know. Cook something over there? Yeah. <laughs> Put a hot pan down. Yours is too. I yeah. think it's the mat. I think it's the rubber from the mat. It's peeling off the the old it doesn't smell layer. Good. What do you say? It doesn't smell good. Playmats don't. Have you ever opened a playmat like tube with a playmat mat in there? Yeah, gross. No. Don't want it. Okay, so dome three times. I'm dome, going second, dome, dome, so I dome. should have the advantage there. Lead of a control token six times. I'm going second, so I should have the advantage there. Onslaught, defeat three enemy heroes. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Jordan, there hasn't been any discussion around abilities for the other classes. I hope it doesn't happen, though, personally. Um, I think that's an unnecessary complexity for this game. I will say the thing I like about it, I, I almost, you almost need a, a reference card if you're going to do more. Which is the problem. Yeah, but the thing I like about it is that if they use it sparingly, they can definitely um, in two ways use it. One, on cards you're playing from hand. So if you have if a, this is a warrior, yeah, do it's X. like do oh, X, I'm into that. and then it's I'm like totally if this is that. an assassin, do Y or whatever. Um, but the other thing is, if they really need it, um, you can basically fix a problem by changing a class of character. Mm. So if armor or like in this case, armor with mages, obviously it's a direct counter. But like if something just is too far, you can potentially give every color a fix by saying. Warriors now do plus one damage against yeah. assassins. And that could, that could also rotate throughout a tournament or throughout a league or throughout a whatever. 
um, just to keep it fresh. Yeah, but I'm a more conservative designer. Yeah. I think in the grand. I think scheme the of fact things. that you've already jumped the shark with the mages having something. You'd certainly, yeah. It's I mean, it's kind of already. There's one exception to this rule. So once there's one, there's a door for more. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't. Makes mages feel special. They are special. They should. Yeah, wizards, magic. Weird. Also, someone was asking earlier if Astrida was a mermaid that morphs into a human or vice versa. She's definitely a human. She walks around on the earth. Oh. But then she look she's, at these things. She's one of the creepier ones. Isn't? Aren't she they? She captures neat? this guy in this like magical chamber underwater, and if he leaves it, he'll drown. Hmm. And she's like learning from him. But like forcing him to teach to like—it's like a twisted Little Mermaid variation. Yeah, and then she will, uh, she mermaids to go down to this like deep dark area where he's trapped, and like learn. It's yeah. That would be a weird existence, being trapped underwater in like a bubble. Like being, a mermaid being visited by a mermaid to learn your ways. Daniel says, "Before that happens, I'm waiting for heroes that share two factions." I was listening to the, uh, let me pull up the name of it. Um, there's a couple Sky Terror Outsiders podcasts. Something or other? Outsiders only? There was one, it was the one that Ricardo and Giacomo went on. Outsiders only? Yeah. Um, and th- I, got to, I got really excited about this because they were talking about a hero from the whatever's supposed to come out in like September, October ish. Mm-hmm. And it's basically there's four heroes and like their position between each of the colors. Cool. And the way they work is they're still of one color. But they can basically benefit from the warship actions on both sides. Very good. Which I thought was a really Absolutely fun love that. Yeah, absolutely love that. All right, drawing. How do we draw six? That's right. No difference now, right? No it used difference. Used to be six yeah. and five. Trapped in a bubble. Oh, yeah. Well, I get that flux, though. You do get that flux. That is a good reason to go first. That was, the, that was genuinely the reason that it happened. I don't know why I did this. <laughs> this is you my said flex. it, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ah, oh, wow. All right, definitely keeping that. Definitely keeping that. Two, two gone. Don't need that. Okay. Ooh, I playing all the cards that I like. Isn't that funny how that works? It is. Today is Giacomo's birthday. Oh my gosh. Giacomo, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Hey, uh, crew at home, do we have that uh, meme to pull up? What's the meme? I don't know if we ever got that done. I'll know in just a second. We absolutely do. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Giacomo's birthday, one of the creators of Sky Tear. Let's all sing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a singer. I can't hear you guys. What's up? Yeah, why? All right, I'm good. Yeah, go first then. It's still hard. I still don't know. I mean, we need to we need to we need to sit down, turn off the cameras, and have some candid conversation about like what are the actual openings in this game. I feel like we need a weekend. I don't know if the cameras matter or not, but I'm going to do a 48-hour just a weekend jam Live, session. Sleep, learn. Yeah, we'll get rid of Sky Tour Tuesday, but replace it with weekend benders. <laughs> like, let's do this. All right, I will go with Yamidala. She's going to time glitch. Oh, look, somebody got on the fast train. Well, I'm on white, or yellow again. So you said you didn't like those cards, not but last stream. You said fast had gone way down in value. It had. And it's back. Uh, and it's back. No, it's right. got that plus two on it. It's very one-dimensional. Yeah, it's deck it's a plus two, here. and it's also <laughs> Yami on the opening with plus, the speed is actually relevant. Yeah, it is. Um, but actually, the other, the real thing is the remove condition on this one. Yeah. So be able to get rid of a disarm and become fast or something. All right. So she's gonna move. She's gonna skirmish. Mm-hmm. Then she's gonna move. Mm-hmm. Three, four, five. That minion. Her ability. <laughs> Dead. Yeah, with her ulti too. Yeah. In- impressive. And then, so it was skirmish, move, and then we will... Don't you lead from hand now. Come on now. Top of deck. Oh. 
What's your average on that one? 1.78? This is my... What's, this is freaking awesome that I can do this. Uh, average man is 1.75. Okay. It's probably a two. There's a pretty good chance of being a two. We already saw a three on your flip. How many threes in your discard pile there? One. One, three, two you can, twos, and you a can one. You can see where my average comes from. That's actually your average curve right there, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you got rid of two migraines. Look at you go. Oh, I can't. I'm not going to play a Scotch or Flex on it, and I can't play it this turn. Mm hmm. So. But what about next turn? What about second breakfast? We've had one breakfast, but does he know about second breakfast? Does he know breakfast? about second breakfast? Dude, I'm almost a Helm's Deep in my Lord of the Rings reread. That Lord of the Rings is good. It yeah, delivers. It didn't, it didn't fail at the last second like so many of our favorites. Star Wars, Game of Thrones. Mm hmm. Star Wars, Game of Thrones. <laughs> 2019. I thought 2019 was bad. <laughs> and then 2020 showed up. Uh, but wait, one more thing. One more thing. Huh. I still don't know the right thing to do. I mean, Isn't that know. amazing? I, I've looked at this and I've done it. I, I was probably at my peak level of comfort that weekend I played against Tim. Mm -hmm. I was telling him, was like, I just feel like a, something opened up in the sky and I knew exactly what to do every time. Do you just take the, I, I mean, do you always just take the Ekrit Sky Lance? I don't think you do it first because I have Habarat sitting there. Yeah, you don't do any of it first, though. That's always my problem. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you what I what I can do, and this is uh... Ben Sweeney. Zach, how do you feel about Disney making episodes seven, eight, nine no longer canon? Uh, did they do that, or how would I hypothetically feel about that? <laughs> okay, let's let's do. What if we did this? I I'm gonna I'm gonna do some experimental jazz here. It's insane playing with all the all painted models. It's so good, man. Uh, Kanui's gonna activate. We're going to start out with a Warship action. You can't see me? Yeah, I need mine. Yeah, well, that sounds like a problem. They're all mine. You. For you. All right, so a Warship here, which places under the caster, and I can move up to three. So I'm going to go one, two, three. Second action, I'm going to move. One, two, three. I guess I could be on the outskirts. That's fine, right? Again, things I don't know. Ah, you know, you could flex either lane. Last I mean, action, we're going to go from hand. Red, yellow doesn't have any push you ones, do they? At one cost? Definitely not at one cost, no. I think only at three. All right. Interesting indeed. Come and get it. I like doing this with Kanui. I had, I had, at first I had been keeping her next to her illusion so she couldn't be attacked, but now it's just like, if you spend your first turn like whittling me down, the rest of the game I'm just next to my illusion and like, yeah, so it's just a waste of time. Unless you can do it in one turn. That's the goal. But I think that's a good, good bait. Right. Interesting, interesting. Cool, cool. cool. <laughs> hmm. It's got that good tension and pressure of like chess. Like when when do you want to reveal your actual plan? And then like that early Monpoc thing where it's like you've got to be strategic in not overextending. Look at this boat. Isn't it neat? I don't know the words to that song. I'm sorry. I want more. I want to be in a bubble down in the ocean learning from a person. Da 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 Hmm. I'm going to do some globetrotting with Akuti's Illusion this game. I have a feeling. 
All right, there's so much I want to do, it's unreal. After just one move, so much has been revealed. Who, uh, anyone in the chat watch that 2v2? Where the game went belly up when nature reclaims and Mind Palace. Who, are we gonna ban Mind Palace that gonna happen, anybody? <laughs> anybody? Anybody out there? Stinch, we actually did uh, Elf of our Skirmish a few weeks back. You can find that video on uh, YouTube, archived on YouTube. It might be archived on Twitch too. I don't. I don't have quite know. Shove, and Ben was in it. Oh well. Wow. Nice. You have shove, right? If possible, which is move me one of your next to me. And then what's the yellow one? I have that as well. What's it called? Not telling. I couldn't think of it earlier. <laughs> it's time time warp. Or time, time warp. Shift, and I move one. my caster one. Yeah, you move one. All right. I'm just gonna, and you're like, not telling. <laughs> Son of a. What do we think about that? Why, why, how does that combo work? What's it, how, how is that possible? You got a 16 card deck. Nature reclaims for three mana. You draw three. You mine palace. Draw three. How do you, how do you cycle through 16 iterations? So. If you only have 16 cards in your deck, you technically have six in your hand. Mm hmm. So there's only like 10. Right 10 in the deck. And if your three draw threes are in there, uh, or even if. Uh, so you would have nine, so you'd have the three draw threes and, and the, the draw twos. And then the two mind pal or the three mind palaces. So if you cycle it correctly, you basically, I think technically, if there's 10 cards in your. Because you can go above your hand limit during a turn. Mm hmm. Yeah. So then when you get down to like four or five in your deck, you can just like literally yeah, yeah, yeah. Then definitely you just go guarantee forever. what's yeah, going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Say yeah. So well. That's fun, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> As we said, this is a card game. I wonder if Mind Palace is ever going to get. I think it might get banned eventually. How much health does a kitty have? Or uh, what's her name? Kanui? Kanui. 18. Do you want me to actually set my track? That would be nice. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. <laughs> so good. 16 health is where I like to live, man. 16 health, one armor, every day. All right, let's go with uh, Sethiru. He's going to skirmish. You got it. There. Dads. Two. Piercing. Yikes. He's a mage. Uh, then he'll worship. Can you punch this? Yep. Does she have range? Nope. She's got fans. Let's go there. Uh, then he will shoot her. Okay. Three. Shoot him. Plus zero. Three. So skirmish. Worship, shoot, and then he'll play a Shatter Mine for four. Shatter Mine for four. Nothing like Sethiru. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Tim, Mine Palace is my favorite card, and I think it should eventually be banned. <laughs> it seems crazy. It does seem a little crazy. Mm hmm. <laughs> Okay, I'm with it. Ooh, good options. We've got some very good options. But how are we going to use them? Why is James crying? It's a very good question. Okay. Maybe that's the right. Kichi's a mage too, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's ready to party. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe I'm just gonna fry fry that fish. I don't like this mage business. 
two, one, two, three. It's a maging. Hmm. I bring two mages. Armor. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and the direct damage cards. That's so good. Five, and then that thing, and then that thing. Don't mind me. Just a couple more shatter mines coming up. Look at the sky. Mm. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. I can get there. Two, three, four, five. And that. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. How about nine? What's Cage's attack? Three? Mm hmm. Five, four, four, My average is about seven with an attack and a skirmish. Habarat can do his thing too. AKA beast mode. Beast mode. So if he can see his illusion, he gets the ability. The uh, Lord of the Sky Terror thing is all you need to worry about. Uh, Anything that yeah, can yeah. see that, that has the icon on it, if you can see that icon on the board, then that ability is active for you. Very cool. Yeah. The real question is, do you try? Do you roll for armor or not? With Kichi's business, because I could just put I could put an illusion in there, pump the armor. But it's like trying to defending his Habarat and Kichi is a problem. That there's a problem. They're the party bus. Mm-hmm. And there's a way to do it right. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I'm gonna go with Akuti. We're going to I think we're gonna move first. Let me make sure that's right. You ever feel like it goes from blazing hot to frozen? Very cold? Yes, I do feel like that. Fire and ice, our favorite elements. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We've earned it. <laughs> I really kind of just want that plus one armor. What's that worth, you know? One one to two damage off of Habarat? That might not be enough. All right, let's go with a cutie. We're going to move. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. We're going to worship. We're worshiping so much more than we did in the early games. Yeah. One, two, three. What's that do? Uh, whenever I attack something, I can attack a minion next to that thing. And then... You don't have to see it or anything? No. That's crazy. Uh, what madness is this? I'm going to attack... I can either attack the illusion or I can just start working on Sethru because, again, it's still just mashed potatoes. Um, let's attack the illusion. All right, don't get a minus three. Two plus one. He's gone. And then we'll resolve here. Blah. Blah. All right, mine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with Kichi. Go on. Skirmish. There. Yeah. For zero. Worship. Mark. Predict two. Discard both. <laughs> I found my zeros. Got him. Uh, then he'll attack. Okay. Three plus one for four. All right, let's go with one, two, three, four, five, one, two, 
let's go with the Strider. Come on. Um, first thing she's going to do is cast Swiftness. Whew. Give herself fast. She's a fast mermaid. That's right. She's, <laughs> she's always been a fast mermaid. Draw. Okay. And then she's going to go one, two, three, four, five. Um, she's going to worship herself. Fast can be gone. And she's going to attack Haberat. One, two, three. Am I going to disarm? Yeah. I see you. Take three. I see you. All right. Mine? Yep. Eckert in the wings. She's so good, though. <laughs> Line them up. All right, let's go with Haberat. Kakarot. Uh, that time shift. He'll move. No, now would be the time. It'd be a good shift. time. He could have held it. Yami could have just held it. Yeah. Move here. Uh... He's going to attempt to attack. Who? Be another one. Kanui? Kanui. He's good to attack Kanui. All right. It's a four plus two. Minus halved and then minus one. Three, five total to 2.5. It goes to three minus one. So he'll take, take two. Take two. Okay. Then he'll skirmish. Good. Three divided by, so two minus one is one. And he'll go one, two. Okay. And that's your last activation? Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. You've got nothing in the dome. You could have a quick shot or whatever you always have. <laughs> <laughs> He's always got it. He's always got it. That's funny. I don't know what you're talking about. You got one from top on Yami. Okay. One from the top on Yami. I'm winning the dome. That is undeniable, unless you have what? Could you flux Nightmares Incarnate, I guess? Setheria is full. You could do that with Kichi. That would be a rude move. That would be what we in the business call Bugatti. It would be rude be so rude. <laughs> it would be rude. Very, very rude. We could go clean this up over here. Hmm. And then the outsiders, the Lord of the Ancestors. Mm-hmm. Huh. Wheel. Let's see. So if you have the quick shot, that's a tie. I'm winning here. If you have the Nightmares Incarnate, that's bad. For a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. And you're winning there with a rando from the top, and I could do something about that. Okay. So in a perfect world, yeah, you can do a lot. But you know what you learn in card games? Your opponent rarely has that. The perfect world is rarely in their hand. So don't get too upset about it, right? Um, let's see. One, two, three. Attack. Skirmish. Let's see if there's any moves. Oh, we could prevent that, actually. Three. Push. Yep. That could prevent that one. Dang, man, why does worship take so long to work? <sighs> it's an investment. Okay, I'm going to do a um, move here. Yep. Let's go 
One, two, three. Mm -hmm. Let's do a worship. There. And then let's declare an attack in a straight line. Um, is there a better straight line? That's fine. That'll work. You got it. Yeah. Two plus three to Kichi, push you one away. I see him there, or yeah. you want him here? Um, that's fine. Done. All right. Any weird reactions? Nope. Oh my gosh. That was a good play. Yay. One uh, here. Actually, I have, a, I have an end of turn reaction. A quick shot there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind that. of the important part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that's yeah. Right. Okay. All right, number one. We tie. We tie. Nothing happens. Spawn two. One in, <laughs> one on. Over there. Number uh, two. You yeah, got to win that one. I have three. Three to two. Four. Four to two. I lose one, move two, and then spawn two. That's not good. Put them in a straight line, if you would, please. Yeah, right? <laughs> I mean, there's no way to avoid it, but I just won't give you three in a line. Uh, El numero three, I have one. You have a whole bunch. Yeah. Get you your outsider. All right, I win one. So you've got one on, I'll take one on Sky Tier. One on Tactician, you've got one on Tactician. And then Lord of the Ancestors is going to come in and clean up. Adjacent to a friendly minion, spawn one, move the control token one hex, choose a friendly minion and place it adjacent to another friendly minion on the battlefield. Reinforce victory or defeat. Well, Sansa would tell you one thing. Sunza. Yeah, it's true. It would not be the defeat one. It would not, no. But I feel like that's a really good way to stabilize on that corner. Yeah, and it's like, I don't know how concerned I am anyway. Like, I feel like Yami's just going to stand over here and do that forever. And it's like, I, I just need to win this two more times, so is there a good way to make sure that I do that? Or maybe to create some problems for yeah. you? Yeah, you're good. <clears throat> um, I think it's going to be here. OK. So I'm going to spawn next to a friendly minion there. OK. Spawn a friendly minion is first action. So good. Um, move target control, going to one hex. Don't really want to do that. She's a friendly minion placed an adjacent to another friendly minion on the battlefield. Is there any reason not to do it? Move a friendly minion away or whatever? No, no, no move the uh, control target one. Uh, it puts you immediately in control range, so you oh, wouldn't a, have to move. That's a good reason. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I am going to have to do like something else with this activation. They can punch a minion. I wish I could spawn a friendly minion twice. Yeah, that's what I'll have to do. Uh, choose one and place one on the battlefield. So I'm going to punch this one as my second action to yeah. start. Kill that boy. Blah. And then third one, let's place one uh, somewhere you get to move else one? on the battlefield. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. If I could like block your movement in, this would be a sick time to do it. Uh -huh. I don't uh -huh. have that right now, but I like the idea of it. <laughs> the concept? The concept is strong. Yeah. Uh, let's move this guy. It's going to go over here. I don't know. Is there a straight line thing that you have? I don't think there is. I've, I've seen enough yellow and red no, cards. A, the honeycomb. Yeah, OK. I, I also have the uh, dragon punch. So like technically, this spot would be pretty sweet for a dragon punch, because I can hit all, all of them. Mm -hmm. But that's all right. It's either a round AOE or a dragon. I mean, hard, hard to completely play around it. Over to you. All right. It's uh, time for it. draw cards. Draw some cards and play some ball. It's an important 
Cord draw. Cord. <laughs> Cord draw. Cord. <laughs> Ooh, I don't want to draw two ultimates right now. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. Let me tell you something. Right now, boy. Let me tell you <laughs> something. We got our every game is so incredibly different. It's so wild, man. Yeah, it's uh, it's good. I I like the two main, the green and red, and the red and yellow. I like basically experimenting with both of those mm -hmm. so that I'm not just playing the same thing every time. And then there's two lists within each of those. That's cool. Okay. Cool. 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 So anyway, so Theory started blasting. He did indeed. Nick, just checking in here with the chat too, I do think that um, Arkham is probably the ideal solo game right now. Champions is a pretty good solo too, but. All right, uh, let's. let's. Let's go with Kichi. Kichi? Kichi. Kichi out of nowhere. He's going to skirmish. Mm. We're, we're just going to flip that, too. That's bold. Right yeah. off the top of the deck, bold. dude. There's nothing to be done about that. I got all the zeros earlier. Go like, for it. All right, let's go. not flip anything. Move one, flip. We're obviously going there. Nuh-uh. Only a one. Boom. Uh, and that's going to determine what I have to do. <laughs> uh, so then he'll go here. Uh, next action, I'm going to worship here. What's that do? I mark you, and then I get a predict for one plus X, where X is equal to the number of marked heroes I can see. Okay, cool. Predict three. Mm-hmm. What you gonna predict? Let's discard two. Put that back on top. Then he will... Actually, you know what? Let's flip this. I'll put one on top. Uh, then he's going to shoot. Shooting, huh? Mm-hmm. Hmm. All right, let's think about this for a second. <laughs> hmm. Uh, you know, I think she's going to die. But so I want to use that mana. <laughs> I want to use that mana. She gonna die. <laughs> she gonna die. My mother and brother are dead. <laughs> like OMG dead. Um. Just hear where he's been speaking in Nick's soul. He said Stephen's comment that he spent a thousand hours on ArkhamDB spoke to my soul. Oh great. I, I like speaking to souls. The soul speaker. Uh. So you. I mean, you probably didn't load this up super heavy, right? Because you assume you're only doing one damage. You also probably assume I have this redirect, so... Do you, I really want to take a blast for six on a cootie? That's not good either. Yeah, you can just soak the one. But... It's a weird spot. I'm not sure that I know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Do you only have one card in here? No. Oh, that's like Lord. What All right. Uh, Kenny is going to try to redirect that to Ekuti. So how does that read? Target Kichi, target this effect, which is the attack, and choose a new legal target. So if that resolves successfully, you can play on top of it. Obviously, if that resolves successfully, the attack will take a new legal target. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And who's playing it? Kanui is playing it. The one I'm attacking? Fan Lady, yes. Fan Lady. Um. Play it. Say it, Bart. Say it, Bart. You guys remember that? I, I was raised on The Simpsons. What did he say? What was that phrase? Robert would know. When he, he goes on the Krusty show and he goes, oops, didn't mean, oops, didn't mean to? I think that's what it was. Say the line, Bart. Spires, yeah, the game's called Arkham Horror, the Living Card Game, the LCG. Here We're it playing is. it on Thursday. So I'll let them redirect fire. Okay. I'm redirecting it to this illusion. 
Okay. Then I'm going to play the Sky Tear Flex. Okay. Then I'm going to play a Reeve. Ooh, nice. Nice. Big Reeve there. Big money Reeve. And it's equal to your attack yeah. stat. Yeah. So it's basically three damage. That's okay. All right. He's going to Reeve here. Mm -hmm. Doing three there. Done. Draw two. Get a little fire token on this onslaught. Hello there. Uh, this will attach to Kichi. And then the attack fires and demolishes mm -hmm. that. Okay. All right. All right. Flux has been expended. Can you out? Pew. All right. You're up. Look at Kichi ready to die here. He's he's a good target. Not really a killer though. Kichi? I'm not. Mm. Steven. Lover not a killer. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, Estrada, what are you gonna get up to here? Well, and then he heals one, because you were marked. Nice. What are you getting up to? Let's try it out. What are you getting up to? Hobbrat's got something to say about it. He's got a lot to say. He's ready to party. He's got a lot to say. Fascinating little thing here. Okay, we're going to mermaid ourselves right out of here. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. <laughs> you don't want to get in the Habrat Sethuru party? I really don't. It's, it's like a night at the Roxbury, dude. They're <laughs> about to dance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm worried about your time shift. You're like in the perfect spot for it. What time shift? What time shift, he says. Okay, we'll... I probably just had to burn an attack, I would imagine. Or I've got to somehow get a blocking, uh, some kind of a blocking figure in there. Something that allows you to not move, like a thorn roots, would be sweet. Hmm. It's a green card. Mm. We could just avoid that altogether. That's probably right. Okay, so how does that work? Let's go one, two, three, four. Is it four? The AOE must hit her illusion. Okay. T3, three. Maybe that's right. I think that's right. Um. I'm going to start with Ekrit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a skirmish action. You got it. Do one skirmish on Kichi. Mm -hmm. Take one damage. Pass it around. And then one more move. Hello there. Second action, we're going to worship. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> uh, that's a, anyone that can see that can't be moved. And then third action, I'm going to declare an attack as the wind. I'm going to wind lance attack it. Pew, pew, pew. I haven't seen a minus one yet, so it's coming. Hmm. You are not the biggest attacker. No, a two. Agreed with you now. Uh, literally everything in my list is two, uh, except let's, for can you eat? Uh, I'm going to do this. Uh, Seth Thru is going to react with a migraine. OK. That's good. I'll right. take one damage and two damage. Armor, though. 
Oh wait, he's the Sethir. Ma magician. He's a mage. And then you're disarmed. And then I'm disarmed. Then you can have it. All right. Minus one. <laughs> so it's one. Uh, one damage, yes. Uh, and then Habrat gets pushed here, and Kichi gets pushed here, maybe? Works for me. Okay. Is she done? She's done. I've got all the two attacks, and you've got all the zero armor. A match made in heaven. Those mages. Hello, Astrida. Hello, indeed. Hi. She's still got it. She's as she's as tough as anyone on this list. You have so many resources open. Nothing but resources, man. I've only begun. I've only yet begun to play. Turn two. It's been a hot turn two, let me tell you. Must be getting better. I'm not taking a lot of risks anymore. As much as I wanted to try to do something fancy to Habra, I, I can't risk the time shift for the time warp. You just can't have cards fail like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just not possible. If you if you have a card fail, it's just put you back too much. Look at this thing. Isn't it neat? Somebody hit me with the lyrics. What are the lyrics of that song? I'm going to go with uh, Habra. He's going to quick shot here, mm. assuming you'll let it fire. How creative. Um, yep. OK. Then he will move. Move on. Skirmish. Um. Eckert will go ahead and migraine him. Okay, let me make sure I care. We've got a we've got a desert battle here. Two two damage this one. Yeah, now I got to think about this. <laughs> I, I'm skirmishing it either way. Yeah, you're skirmishing either way. Just if you want to do it against this one or that one, or perhaps Kichi. I don't know where you're floating. Yeah, he'll just uh, skirmish. Mm -hmm. We'll go one there. Mm -hmm. Two, so one. Take one, minus one. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. Look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? Wouldn't you say my collection is complete? Wouldn't you think I'm the girl? The girl has everything. I've got a man in a bubble deep below. Uh, he'll just attack accurate. Teaching me things that I should not know. Yes, go for it. Seven. Divided by two seven. is three point five. Seven from four. Plus three. Seven. Divided by two is three point five. Rounded up is four. Minus your armor is three total. Taking three total. And then that's his turn. Okay. Mm hmm. I've got everything. Boy, howdy. And then you've got Sethiru and Yami. So I'm going to go with somebody. You're going to go with somebody. I'm going to go with somebody. And you are going to go, believe it or not, with somebody. My goal is to keep you at three heroes for the rest of the game. Mm-hmm. Except you're also dying. Why is Zach dying? Why is Zach dying? Because all of his heroes have zero armor. That's right. Well, Yami doesn't, but she's downtown hanging she's, out by herself. She's all by herself, yeah. All by 
Herself. <laughs> and so theory is all used up, unless you got that mind palace. You don't that have is. Any, don't have any pushes available to me. Okay. So let's go with. Let's see, how many of these minus ones have I seen? I'm pretty sure Steven didn't take a damage from that skirmish. Hmm? When I skirmished with Haberat? You took zero, right? You did two halved and then and you one armor. Them. Yeah. So I'm in prime territory to get wrecked by these minus ones right now. <laughs> Great. There are three minus ones in here. I like that we have it on record before the game that you said... I'm now willing to take the risk, and then you don't want to take the risk. We got three out of fourteen. What are the odds there? Three into four, five. It's like almost one in five. It's a one in five shot. You're like eighteen percent chance. But we, but we all know. We all know what one in five actually looks like when you have seeded your entire early game on exactly what is about to happen. It's not good. All right, Akuti. You're going to attack here. Going to attack uh, Kichi. You got it. Take three. Illusion gets an attack. Kills. Kills to pay the bills. <laughs> Slow motion. <laughs> okay. Second action. We've got Sithiru and Yami left. I feel like. As much as I want to get armor in the dome, it might matter less than I want it to matter. <laughs> oh, maybe I just bail. No, I will win the dome. Second action. Uh... <laughs> the dome will be mine. Don't you see? <laughs> oh, man, I don't know. You know? Why is Steven crying? I just am so amused and excited by the possibilities of this game that I cannot make a decision. <clears throat> I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Second action, I'm going to worship. Uh, one, two, three. Anyone that can see that gets plus one armor. And then third action, I'm going to lead from my hand. That's that. All right, so you have a strider left? I have a strider left. Mm hmm All right, let's go with Yami. She's going to time glitch. Why is Yami crying? Because she's running too fast. See, yeah, but that's right. The armor was the right choice then. Yeah, you're good. Why is armor the right choice? I just in case she wants to try to scythe that right here. Come in the. Uh, she's gonna go one, two, three, four, five. Oh, uh, we'll she's just menu. partying over there by herself in that lane. Smoosh him. She just partying. Uh, and then she will. Want everything. Skirmish. Skirmish. Accurate. Bring it on. Your last card is plus five. It's a two. Take one. Take two, zero. Take zero. zero. Look, there you go. That's right. It's one damage right there. MVP ball play. Is that card from hand? On uh, it is. What's her What's her bucket? It's a one from hand. Phyllis Master, what are you saying here, Phyllis Master? I I love seeing your name. I, there's so many of you that we see in the chat every day. Ben, you're one of them as well. Tim only comes in on Sky Terror Day. So he comes in on Arkham cut. sometimes. You're out. Uh, Phyllis Master, just noticed FFG is still doing an in-flight report on Twitch this year. Nice to keep that tradition up. 
I wonder who will be doing the talking this year now that Andrew is gone. That's a very good question. There's a um, lot of questions about what, who's doing what at FFG right now, honestly. <laughs> Sorry, Tim. This game's great, though, isn't it? Isn't it weird? Ah, it's weird. And like Champions, you know, you've got, you've got such massive popularity for a game like Champions. I understand this is more demanding on your time and your, that's why, your resources. But it's such a good experience. Let's commit a card from hand. Okay. Tie in the dome. I'm currently ahead, my friend. Now we've got it. I don't know how you're doing that math. I got three heroes in there. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm planning on a stride of being in there, so. <laughs> okay. So, Sethir is not going to attack a minion, and he's got no mana. So if he wastes his attack on a minion, you could take both lanes, I could take the dome, and then it's like, who's got the dome <laughs> for the rest of the game? Because I win it one more time, and it's over. I think that's my best bet. Aberrat. Okay. So I'm probably doing the old boom, boom. Oh, this is gone. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, chicka boom. I said a boom, boom a chicka raka. Uh, Astrid is gonna go. <laughs> I'm just picturing midstream one day. If we just break out and dance and like beatboxing, it'd be hilarious. <laughs> Not gonna happen. What's she doing? Is she gonna come to the party? She's partying, man. Uh, she's gonna worship first action. Hmm. Turn into a mermaid. Squiggle around like a little mermaid. Uh, second action, we're gonna do a skirmish. I'm gonna allow it. Who's she hitting? Well, um, it's a minus one, I reckon. So uh, let's let's get a little kichi going. All right. There it is. Heal one. <laughs> we, we say that as a joke, and I guarantee you, there's at least one person watching that's like, "Oh, really?" Third then action. we can't wait. Says he's looking forward to when we can have Sky Terror weekend and just travel the Covenant to play. I can't wait either. Can you imagine a whole weekend of people just hanging out? 2025. Sky Terror? Let's Here do we it. go. <laughs> Whenever we're all in the bubble, bubble suits. And then I'm going to attack Sethuru. Try to disarm him. Oh. Okay. Take one. Get Boom. disarmed. Disarmed indeed. There's both my minus ones right there. All right, all right. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, 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 all of you. All right, well, we're going to go with Sethuru. He's going to... I'm going to use Habarat to play a Crippling Precision on Sethuru. What? So he gets plus one attack, and if he hits something with a skirmish or an attack, they get slowed. They get slowed. Slow Madillo. Slow Madillo, indeed. I'm glad I did that disarm. He's going to skirmish. Uh, we're going to go... One. Uh, we'll just start with the attack on Ekrit. Or the skirmish damage on Ekrit. Skirmish damage on Ekrit. Coming up. Yep. It's a zero. But he's going to move. Does it have to do damage to slow? Yeah. Okay. Let's go one, two. In case you got something funky. Man, we're just okay, right? Let's just conga uh, line it here. <laughs> then I'm going to use Yami to play my other crippling precision. Yeah. So I'm at plus two. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he's going to attack Ekret. Okay. Uh, actually, I'll worship first. That's bizarre you can give crippling precision to other people. It's target hero. That's so strange. Uh, it's so unusual for the game. He's attacking at five. Five, halved. Disarmed, halved. Plus, you ready? Yep. Is that two? Are you two revealing cards, yeah. two? Oh, he only gets one. Yeah, just going to look at that next card. Huh? Huh? Six, huh? halved, I'll three, take three. Three past the armor. And you're slow. Snailed. End of round. End of round. Number one. You win by one? I win. Squash. 
do place first, but I have a feeling we're all loading up in Two that coming zone. in. Not that it's ever really mattered. That's right. Three to one, I win by two. You do. Crush your minion, destroy a tower, draw a card. Crush your minion, destroy your tower, draw a card. Crush your minion, destroy a tower, draw a card. And it moves one. And then I have to spawn. I can't do that. No, you cannot. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be pretty sweet, though. It'd be sweet. Uh, then we go to the middle. Three heroes to three heroes, and we each have a face down. Three heroes to three heroes. That's not right, is it? Don't you have more? You have four, dude. Oh, I do have four. Yeah, I, <laughs> I thought you only had three, too, but you got four. I got a three. I got a three. All right. All right you so got it. I get a second. I get one here. I get one here. We each get an extra one there, too. I just get the one. This lane. Yeah. Uh, and then I get the round the outside. Round the outside. Interesting. That over there is going all right for me. Yeah. Let it churn. That's the beaded dota, man. Let it churn. Or you can let it churn super hard. I think I put here. And then I will attack here. Okay. So it's a two. Did. Then I can spawn a friendly minion. Put them here. Then I can move a minion. Let's put it here, adjacent to another minion. Nice. And then create problems. <laughs> problems. And then we draw our two. I got problems. Ooh, I like these cards. I agree. Mm-mm-mm. Dog pile. Dog pile. <laughs> Here we go. It's a total dog pile. All right. You've got what? Can you be coming in? Eight. Eight left. Let's just deal Heavy with Heavy hitter it. is here. Um, let's see. Where does she need to be? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's fine. She's in. And you get the first. Yeah, Ben, we're all in the bubble. That's right. All right. Let's, the bubble on the mine. Let's go with Kichi. Okay. First thing he's going to do. He's going to worship Ekrit. Worship Ekrit. Wow. That's very nice. She's the one. It's good. <laughs> Mark predict, on. Predict two. <laughs> Let's discard both. Then he will attack Ekrit. Okay. Think about that for a second. You got any redirects in your discard pile? <laughs> nope. Uh-oh. Gonna be a wild one in the middle, let me tell you. Things are going everywhere. What's so funny is there's actually... Uh, yeah. There is a thing, there is a possibility here. Huh. 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 All right, Akrit. Akrit's going to try to play Chasm. So I'm going to target a hex within two. 
I'm going to target this hex. And what's it do? Pushes everything adjacent to it one hex. Habarat's the middle of the tornado. I know there's things here. I know it. I know it. <laughs> All right, you can resolve it. All right. So everything next to Habarat's getting pushed one. Yeah, Habarat as well. Anything yeah. within the thing. Um, all right, so we'll start at the important pieces. One, one, one. One, one. Tax key fizzly. Yep. My next action? Yeah. Uh, Keechy will skirmish. Skirmish is good. He's going to go one, <laughs> two, there. <laughs> he wants it. Yeah. <laughs> Plus two. <laughs> two damage. <laughs> then I will play a Burning Rage with Kichi to mm -hmm. give him Frenzy. Mm -hmm. And he actually heals one from that. From doing any damage? To you, your heals mark, one. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I get to use my Frenzy. I'm going to try to Frenzy. Uh, yeah, you can Frenzy, and then... Um, A cootie is going to attempt to cast Nourish, targeting here. Now that would be the Bugatti redirect. I On will. The <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I'm actually going to play Neil before me with Yami. Ooh, nice. Uh, to reaction, deal four and apply slow to a target enemy. He will place it next to Yami and mark them. Okay. So, uh, Nourish, I'm going to move her here. Yeah. And then I think you can't see her. That's anymore. great. Yeah, I'm out of range. Uh, but then you can see this again, so you do get armor, right? I do get armor, but I'm against Kichi, it won't matter. But yeah. four so damage. Four. So take two. Yeah. And then you'd be slow if you weren't already slowed. I'm already slow. And then Kichi's attack. Yep. Need a one. Got a two. Got her. All right. Well, at least I got that three mana out there, you know? I'm going to get a, yeah. I mean, you made me. I draw two. You had to earn it, right? And then I will go ahead and... Is this where we see? He? he was here, right? You moved him here? I put you here. Sure. No, but I think that's, that's right. right. Um, use it while you got it. Right? <laughs> Am I right? Yeah, put Yami's ulti on her there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You did your job, Yami. Good yummy. <laughs> yummy. Uh, yummy. Mm -hmm. Hmm. It's just a resource that I may as well use. Because you're about to dogpile on top of Kichi. Ah, I don't know about that. Um, now nah, we're good. End okay. of his activation. Okay. Okay. End of Kichi. I just want to know where my dodge is at. <laughs> that would have made that so much easier. Where are my dodges? Like push me on a dodge into the middle, and it's like, all right, attack still happens. This is a great game. It is, isn't it? I'm a, a big fan. Okay. That was maybe the first ultimate I pulled off in like two months. Dude, her her ulti being a reaction is it's good. Yeah, it's I I way good. prefer doing it to like end of round, like. If she was here, I could take you out of the dome and mm -hmm. make you just get smoked. <laughs> but I'll also take it as a reactive to guarantee a kill. Get smoked. 
Okay, so what, how are we going to do some damage here? other directions you can go here. Definitely other directions. Four, five, six, one, two. We've both been in the dome forever. One, two, three, currently up by one. Each would be out for two turns. That's pretty sick. Um, I'm going to go with uh, a strata mermaid. Get it, mermaid. We're going to do a skirmish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Targeting Keach. You got it. There it is. Hey, that's not a bad minus one. Not a bad one. Not a bad one. Um, Keech. How's everyone doing out there? Got real focused on that game for about 30 minutes. It got crazy. Let's see. You've got... I'm going to try. I'm going to try to cast her ulti on Sethru. Oh, Lord. Exhaust. Oh, Lord. No. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> All right. How is that a card? She's a mermaid. You should play more Dota. It gets really weird. Uh, second action, I'm going to worship. That's the worst. That was the theory as he did? Mm-hmm. Jeez. Third action, I'll attack Habra. You got it. All right. Ooh, there's Guide. Take, uh, what is this? Uh, three on Habra and Disarmed. Got it. Ugh. She's living up to that Disabler title. Naga Siren, Brett, you are so right. Oh my gosh. So good. Used to have that mirror ability, make a bunch of copies, and then have that blade that, like, mana burned, I think it was, or something. All right. Uh, Man, redirect there would have been brutal. You could have targeted Kichi with it. And didn't you... You didn't play anything with a cootie earlier? Any of the cards? I did. I played Nourish. Yeah. You rat. <laughs> you rat. That's the hardest part. Totally right. That net. Naga Siren had that net. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That was good. You might just Nexus it here. I gotta not let that happen. <laughs> It, that's like at least three turns away, right? Mm. Even right now, if I win by four, I would kill two minions and two towers. Yeah, and then you push. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. No, no, it would just be towers. two towers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'd have to like actually come and do something about you. Yeah, Brett, that was right. Yeah, you can stick that diffusal blade on it. That was so good. It was hard. I mean, it was hard to get going, but once you got it going, it was bustedly good. All right, let's go, let's go with uh, Habarat. Okay. I'm going to play a clear mind. There it is. You got it. Get out of here. <laughs> uh, you can see me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is, this, is, this, is that him? Yeah, it's him. Uh, let's worship. Okay. And he'll put it. Here. Okay. Then he will skirmish. You got it. Here. Okay. Let's try to. One armor. One armor hits. Uh, then I will attempt to punch you. Do you want this next to me so you get plus one? Oh, I started to see it. Yeah, I'll just put it here. Yeah. The seeing it ability is the move one when you kill a minion. Yeah. Okay. I'll try to punch you. You got me. 
Five plus two cards. Make it seven. Take six. And then... I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, it will be... Uh, Skirmish, Warship, Attack. I don't want to play this card or not. Now nah, we're good. You're good. Okay. 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 You got to kill three heroes, huh? What'd you say? You just got to kill three heroes, huh? That's right. You're mm. down to ten. That's not good. <laughs> That's not it. Buddha, buddha. <clears throat> I'm back. Okay. 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 Let's think about this. All right. Let's do... Um, Nice whiskey run, Nate. Nick. Jeremy's saying his guide been played. I don't think so. Not yet. Haven't seen it. Akuda's gonna worship. You got Yami left. Mm-hmm. One, two. It works for me, I suppose. Good enough county work. That's right. Uh, second action, we're gonna attack Kichi. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> All right. Three damage. Down to five. Attacking the minion. Take a damage. Oof. Minion. And then last action. Yeah, it's crazy that Sky Terror Master makes the dome real busy. Yeah. Having that plus the uh, it's good. Whatever the tactician, it's it's too valuable to win the dome. Plus you get the the actual outsider. Yeah. It's so good. Um. Man. Do I risk it? For the biscuit. What are my ones in here even? Uh, there's the three swiftness. I've seen the nourishes. Uh, sure. From the top. Over to you, Yami. Um, Yami Dawa. Yeah, the, the dome being busy is not, not working to my favor. I don't think, I don't think blue, yellow, Wants to like hang out in the dome. <laughs> well, I think like, especially against the, what I'm doing, the dome plus kill things. I just have, yeah. Sky actually, Sky Chair Master plus onslaught is like, a, that's a that's a really killy spread. Because yeah, I can just hang out in the middle and like, if I can win either side at that point. Yeah, so enough. win either side once during the game, not lose the dome. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna get it. I need some some kill things. You don't have plus armor? No. Nope. Just one. Just one armor. <laughs> Jerry Fuller. <laughs> Man, you guys are killish. Five streams in five days. Shut up and sit down and put out like three videos a month. Ha! Well, thanks, Terry. They're, they do great content, though. Yeah, they're, they're producing it. When a you lot take more. a lot of time to produce it, obviously it's better. But we appreciate the sentiment. Um, we've been doing five days for the past uh, 13 Four, weeks. 14 weeks. 14 weeks. This is week 14. So if you're looking purely for quantity, I got to. We're on it. We got something for you. Eat that, Quinn's. <laughs> you ain't got nothing. Uh, man. I can try to go to Shucks uh, at some point, but it seems that's not going to happen. Not right now. Nick Kane, that's a very good question. We'll speak more to that uh, actually pretty shortly, but uh, smart money's on the table on that one. 
<laughs> I think we've even said that we're working on it for a yeah. while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited about that tomorrow. Playing flesh moment. and blood. Big moment. Um, I mean, I just can't keep going, right? Yeah, I think you just crank it down. All right, let's move with Yami. Let's punch. Good. Two plus? Two plus two. Four, I'll take three. And then we will worship, mark you, move to the right where I'm at. One plus, zero, nothing. Uh, so move, attack, worship, Bring it on Shattermind. I'm going to need a miracle here. All right, can you win the dome? You can win the dome. I can. Absolutely can. But I can't win on a dead mermaid. Uh, declaring a skirmish here. My man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead. Getting the Keechee. Keech on. Oh, take three damage. Woo -wee. Woo -woo -woo. No, you, you don't have any, you don't have dodge mana, so I don't think there's any fancy business here. I could uh, slide. I'm just kidding. Slide to the left. Slide to the right. That's awesome. Terry says, we're all watching your Netrunner commentary videos in our downtime. On the way cool. to the office. Uh, second action. <laughs> Terry, all you guys do is wake up and make gold. Your videos go pound for pound with anyone. Appreciate that. Terry, you're the best. Yeah, really, really kind words. Thank you. Uh, second action, I'm going to try to attack Kichi. I don't know any better. You got him. Dead to rights. Dead. He gone. I needed him to go to this turn. So that if there is an eventful round five... <laughs> He's coming back. Okay. What action was that? Skirmish. That's my second. Yeah. Attack. I gotta draw one more card. Give me that worship though. It's it's of no use. Here. Not worship the. Uh, meditate lead. Whew. I have already led here. Oh, Akuti's already in it. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm just shooting for a dead mermaid next round. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. I know what you mean. You know what I mean? I do. Man. <laughs> ben Sweeney says, I'm getting that on a t-shirt, in quotes. You can't win on a dead mermaid. Weird question from Jeremy to Steven says, were you ever a guest on Terminal 7 Podcast? I know Quinn's was, and that episode was one of the funniest things. I laughed so hard. I think I was. I think I was. I was <laughs> on a few different ones there. Treads Million says, we also need a So I Started Shooting t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I'd, I would almost wear that. I feel like it could be read wrong if we didn't know. <laughs> you know you got to read the room there. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb, Zach, will you still love me in the, the morning? Mm, I don't question. know. Depends. On how the evening goes, I guess. <laughs> love someone. My in the love morning. is conditional. Love someone in the evening. Love someone in. I don't know. I was looking for a word that ran with evening, and I'm struggling. Uh, I'm trying to find a way not to lose. I need to be over. I need to be able to get over here, and I've failed in the task that was given to me. I'm not even gonna get a card off of that. Nope. Yeah, you will. Mm -mm. No, you won't. It's <laughs> just perfect. Mm -hmm. If I could move through a cootie like I always want to, I'd be fine. Ivory Tiger says, would you recommend this game versus the cost to get into it? Is it a money sink? Uh, no, no. Uh, of all the things that are money sink, this is far from Yeah, it. I mean... There are money sinks out there. This even, is not one Even if you were going all in, the core set, I think, 70. The expansions are 35, and there's one for each faction. That's four of them, uh, plus an outsider's box. So currently to buy everything that's out for the game is 250 bucks. And then the release schedule is once a quarter for a $30, $35 expansion. So even if you buy everything all the time, it's 150 bucks a year. Um, compared to almost any game, even an LCG at 15 bucks a month, plus deluxes is going to be three, $400 a year. So that's more. Uh, this is easily one of the least expensive games I think we've ever supported, right? I'm trying to think of one that was on an annual basis to buy everything that comes out <laughs> more affordable. I don't, I don't think there's one. I also think this, with just what's out right now, the four expansions plus the Outsiders plus the core set, I could play this game forever. I, I don't necessarily need more. It's, it's incredibly well done. Okay. I put myself in the middle of the scrum in case I need to start shoving. That makes sense. 
Done. All right. Uh, end around. Yeah. You win by two. You splat them. Slide it, splat it, spawn it. You go first. Whip it, bop it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the bop it commercial. Slap it. <laughs> Slap it, trip it. <laughs> flip it, flop it. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, All right, I won one on tactician here. I'm a master tactician. Wooshertons. All right, we got six to two over here. I win by four, so I blow up two minions and two towers, like in Lord of the Rings. Uh, it doesn't go anywhere. It's amazing it how it just keeps rocking. And I get to draw a card because I blowed up a tower. <laughs> Did you draw the, what, the kill me card? Ah, that's, that, that card's crazy. Just sit through have that big dumb ultimate. I didn't realize that's what that did. Um, you get a tactician token, I think? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll put a green on there because green's my second favorite color. No green on the table. Four. My minions. And then the dome. I've got three. I'm winning the dome. Unless, unless the card down is not a... Wouldn't it be fun? It's like a mine palace? It's like, oh, you I don't run mine palace. Well, there years. you go. There you go. All right, you get the ancestor. I'm going to put uh, Kanui on my... The here. Lord of Bones. All right, so Lord of Bones got has got to do a strange... Uh, got to do a Four. strange thing here. This, this could go either way. <laughs> Save the mermaid. If you win the dome and I don't kill the mermaid, yes, you win. Yes, that's correct. That's a relevant thing. We've got to... Keep that as the case. All right, Bones is coming in here. We're also going to get her back this time. Um, let's go Bones on. Uh, spawn? A minion? Skirmish? Or we could spawn, let's spawn a minion here. Am I still marked? Yeah. Mark time, Mark. Show enough. Skirmish. Uh, one, two. And that's going to be a zero plus on Habarat. Oh, take three, Hobbs. <laughs> and then attack Habarat. Two plus. Take three. Yikes. Guess who's got to go first? Yikers. That guy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeesh. I think that was right. Yeah. Spawn. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Spawn, skirmish, attack. Uh, okay. And then draw two. Yep. Give me the give me the beat. The beat, the beat, the beat, the beat. Holy smackerolies. This is interesting. All right. Let's go with Habarat. I think. Technically, let me think about this. Because if you have Nightmares Incarnate, you could just murder Habarat and then it's your turn. That would be a thing. You'd have to do some real fancy dance in here. <laughs> Which you might. That's fine, too, if you do. Uh, let's... Fancy dancy. Let's go with Sethuru, actually. He's going to play, oh, wait, 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 wait. Phyllis Master, I mean, the game is unbelievable. So 
the most satisfying gameplay of my life. It's it, I, it's as good as Netrunner plus miniatures is what I would say in terms of decision making, risk management. Nothing is actually random. It's all calculated risk. Uh, but there is enough randomness because it's a card game and you draw random things. It's just like pretty amazing. Yeah, so we'll go with Sethiru. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is try to play a Shattermind on a Strida. Mm-hmm. Shatter mine on a strata. Wheel, wheel, wheel. Wheel! Look at <laughs> where we are. Willikers, Willikers, Willikers. Isn't that something? I do four and you cast it through the illusion, technically? Uh, if I bonus? can see the illusion, I'm plus one. Okay, you can. And you are. Uh, and I can cast it as though I'm in the illusion space, if I can see the illusion. That's right. Which I can. That's right. That's right. All right, well, um, let's start by trying to do something about it. Yep. Got to just pull you out with the shatter mind. Yeah, see what's going on here. What's going on? I see. I'm going to attempt to play Nourish with Kanui. Mm. Where'd that redirect that, though? <laughs> you got it. Shattermine hits for four. All right. Now I got to think about it. Uh, Sethiru is going to attempt to attack Astrida. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know. Does Eckert come back in? Yeah, she should. Was she in? Yeah, she. I, I put her in front of you. And then you <laughs> destroyed her. <laughs> Quickly forgot that she was a part of my team. Yeah. Uh, Kanui is going to attempt to play another spell. And it is a chasm. Didn't. I thought you said Kanui was playing the Nourish. She did. That's correct. What's your target? The target hex is Yami's space. And you're going to be able to push everything in there one. Mm Yes, Phyllis, this is the board in the starter. And the flip is the three lane. Let's react with Yami. Mm -hmm. Actually, we're going to react with Habarat. Okay. Nightmares Incarnate. On, uh, on the fish? Mm -hmm. uh, no response. All right, so you'll take two. Take two. This goes? Yeah, yeah. All right. We got it. Fizzle, fizzle, fizzle. <laughs> Ding. 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 Okay, my attack fizzles. Fizzles. All right. Then I'll play <laughs> Last Judgment. Ulti. Place the AoE on a target hex anywhere on the battlefield. Line of sight not required. Deal four damage to each enemy hero you hit. You got it. Astrida's hex. That's it. You did it. Good ulti. Yeah, so the first, I do that second. The first one I do is actually Habarats. Mm -hmm. And when That's he goes to attack, one. he deals attacks next to anything here. But if I, if you have Nightmares Incarnate, you can just kill him. Mm -hmm. And that's bad. If I play it and then you kill him, it's even worse. It's real bad. But if I play <laughs> it and then you do exactly what you just did, it's like 
now you're not next to my illusion anymore to do this. Yeah, it totally does so nothing. So I had to wait. Yeah. Um, it totally does nothing. But Sethuru's last judgment is insane. It's real good. Because my, my plan was like attack, and then depending on what happens, uh, skirmish to do it and then bounce out, mm -hmm. and then finish with the last judgment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but Once you got that ulti, it's like... Now, the weird thing is, so there was actually... So I had an out in that... So my hand, by the way, I talked about strength of the pack, and I had two the whole game that did absolutely nothing, which is hilarious to me. Um, so I, pl I played Nourish anticipating it would redirect it so that I could land the Chasm without it getting redirected. <laughs> if I had just chasm first, I would have taken one less damage because that Nightmares Incarnate wouldn't have landed if in response to the... Uh, now, I don't know if that's your... So, like, if I... If you... Because if you, then you can move, but you can't see me in cover, so I don't think Sethiru can get an attack on me. So, if you Nightmare... Or you Chasm first, I still respond with Nightmares Incarnate. Mm -hmm. Either way. Yeah, but... But the, the Shatter, shatter Mind doesn't hit. That's the big one. And then in response to your ulti, I nourish myself with the with the mermaid. Yeah, let me think through that for a second. Because if, if you... If we wind it back... Mm-hmm. And Hab's in there. So then what you're saying is I play Shattermind. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, I'll play the Nourish now. He'll redirect it. Yeah. And then I'll be sure to get the Chasm to get out of town. So if you start with the Chasm. I start with the Chasm. Then let's see how that works. Because I just want to see it. Yeah, for sure. Um, so let me go. I took one, two, three, four for the Shattermind. And one, two for the Nightmares Incarnate. But that was also you healing. And then I didn't heal. One, two, three. So that's essentially yeah, what that we're looks about at. right. Yeah. So then, let's say you play Chasm first. Mm -hmm. So we play Chasm, targeting the same hex in response to Nightmares and in response to Shattermind. And then I would play Nightmares Incarnate with Habarot. Mm -hmm. So then you take two. Take two, end up here, 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 here. I think I've got to push her. Because it was here, right? Mm -hmm. So probably what? Here? And that's it. So the chasm that, resolves. That was my shatter mine. Mm -hmm. You haven't taken any actions yet with yeah. Sethiru. So then I think what I have to do is. Uh, Can you get fast at all? I had uh, the plus two remove condition. Okay. But, you're I, good. but I need the resource to play my ultimate. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to do that. But what I can do instead is. You'd still have it though. It's at four. You can use four mana, right? But I played the one, the shatter mine with oh, you already to the try to get the plus yeah, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think then my play technically if you're at five. The other thing is if I can see this, it does an extra damage. Mm -hmm. It would be five damage on the the play. But I think the better play is oh, actually. I still have the nourish too. Yeah. So if I move, and then skirmish, mm -hmm. reveal whatever the top card was going to be. Um, then Let's I say it's a two. Yeah. Then I attack. Mm -hmm. With my third action, yeah, and then you still have the spell, and then I still so you, have. The yeah, spell. you still got it. Yeah, that was that was still good, unless you somehow had stopped. Now, if you had created a space, I don't know if it's possible. When you spawn, where's the night? The bones guy. Yeah. So he, if I wanted to, I could go here, skirmish, hit Habarat, attack, and then move here and create that pocket in the pocket but then it's like i mean god what a broadcast yeah. I mean, not to say that it's wrong necessarily I, I don't know if that's right yeah but i know that if you're here now i have worse problems that's almost impossible isn't it yeah to see that's pretty amazing actually creating those kinds of pockets is insane yeah because you could have also spawn you know spawn here if the minion did you put this minion here i did put the minion okay, there so, if you put so the that minion was actually there, a critical part of it the second thing you could have done, and I get you were trying to get Habarot off the table, but if you actually yeah. move a minion from here, mm -hmm. then he can skirmish, mm -hmm. and it's the same difference. You can create the pocket, yeah. But that's interesting. Because if, 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 if you do have to get here and make an attempt at it, that's when that double strength of the pack can just kill Sethiru as well. And that's bad for me. So it was kind of an out where it's like kill Habarat, kill Sethiru, and just win on three, three kills, which is pretty tidy. Also during the Twister of Souls... At the end, which would have been sick if I was the first player, three damage to everything in the thing and move them all one hex. Like, kill Hobbit, right there. move Seth through. It's like, ah, it's so good. That's crazy. And especially if you play a chasm with someone else to mm -hmm. like 
pile me up and then just hit him. And then hit him with Twister. Good morning, David. What is up? We just finished the game. We're probably uh, we're probably done with the uh, streaming for the day. We'll just hang out and chat with you guys. If you got, got any questions, we'll answer them. Chris Ainsworth asking how it's going today. Another incredible game of Sky Terror. That was really honestly really good. At least we're getting much better. <laughs> much much better. We're both playing around things that just wreck us. And again, unusable. Strength of the pack. Part we of that. Part ever of that, in a lane. Part of that was that the and win. Conditions. I wasn't in a lane, and you were in it. So, honestly, here's the thing. I, I just I had I think I had both of these in my hand turn one, and I was thinking if I can get two heroes in a lane on turn two and bait one of your heroes into that lane, and then I didn't do that plan, and so I think my actual win condition was win both lanes and don't even touch the dome. Win both lanes three times. Three times, because if you win the dome the third time, both lanes would trigger before the dome win, so I would technically win that game. But my concern was that because I had brought Lord of the Ancestors, that you winning the dome also meant that I would not be able to win two lanes three times in a row. Yeah. So then I was like, well, I got to go in the dome, and then things got personal. <laughs> Red was ready for vengeance. I think, <laughs> I think the other thing with the strength of the pack, though, is the wind conditions did not yes. play to it. But that means it can't be in the core, right? It's got to be in your, your Optional. push, probably in your astrida list yeah. like it was or, before. That's why I did that. Or you just have to actually play the lane strategy. Yes. just Because it's very rare that you don't at least just play that for any wind condition. Whether it's winning control tokens, even if it's killing heroes, like go hide in the Nexus and Strength of the Pack, or try to kill the Nexus, Strength of the Pack is your kill card for that turn. Yeah. Like the fact that you you have the control in uh, whatever, what's the win condition? Tactician. Mm -hmm. And then you also have the defeat, especially if you have those early, because those are going to get me. Yeah. Like just straight out. It's like seven or eight damage. I think that's how you can actually do enough damage to take me off the board. My big thing going first there was... Uh, I, from a just strategic level, uh, if you're going first, if you can kill one of their heroes, which is why I like Red mm -hmm. as going first, if you can kill one of their heroes and then not have one of yours killed, the advantage of going first is now, because now you're getting both benefits. Yeah, it gets, um, yeah, it gets really good. So I had that on turn two and turn three, yep. uh, which is why I can win the dome over there without having heroes, and mm -hmm. I was drawing cards from that, right? I drew two cards you off the side. Yeah, 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 and, and then I tower, every time towers. I kill a hero, I'm drawing two. Um, so the recognition of like that, if you're going first, the same thing with going second though, right? If you're going second and they defeat one of your heroes, you really need to be able to defeat one of theirs to maintain your going second advantage. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it's bad. See, it makes me, I, I liked what we saw there where I basically did what I was talking about with Kanui, basically putting right in the middle of the dome and it's like, okay, come get it and if you, can't, then I'm just going to pl plop next to my illusion. <laughs> but then I did. You pretty much were able to. Yeah, because I killed her on the first action activation of turn two, mm -hmm. before you could even go. Before I could even, and now if I could have dropped that illusion, it would have made it way harder, but because you were going first, you were actually able to do that, which means that my play is probably, again, come back in here, drop an illusion, and, and put a card yeah. down. Because that... That's so devastatingly hard to counter. I mean, I don't attack you. You can't attack right. me. I'm sitting there contributing four yeah. to the dome. You just got to, like, So then I'm actually going... Because I had two quick shots in hand. Um, mm -hmm. So my other play was Sethiru, wherever he's at, or Habarat was over here. And so it's, like, move, skirmish, lead. Mm -hmm. And it's, it depends on what happens over here. But I assumed you had... Because you had a strider here. Yeah. And it's, like, if you pop another minion out, I know I can like take two down. You have one, and I'll probably still win the side. Mm -hmm. um, but you went in the middle, and so I was like, "Well, I tried to play a much different role that game. Very different. Wasn't but that the, cool to see? The disarm role is super cool. Isn't that cool? And it was it was super meaningful. There were a couple times ah. where you kept me. It was like I had a super. It was with Habarat. I came through the middle, and it was like I had a super good stack of turn. Like the cards in my hand too, but. You doing that, yeah. it's like I didn't have the resources to do all the things I wanted to do. I think that's when I also had Frenzy in my hand. Yeah. And it was like, I can't Frenzy and clear the condition. Yeah. But he, if, if you had just let that happen, it would have been devastating. A I mean, Estrada can just flex, but it's such a good hero. Such a good hero. Yeah, and she just threatens too, right? You were over here with the minions. If I just leave her, I ended up having Habarat come out. Because it's like, if I just leave it, you can actually just win the game. And I, I honestly, I haven't used that minus two health ability in a while. 
it's just the threat of it. So it's like if your opponent doesn't respond to it. One thing that I've seen that's really cool that people are doing, um, I saw this the other day with a cootie, which you saw it there. Um, but That's you, a good team, by the way. You, yeah, you can essentially go to the middle, and then you can put an illusion out here, and then attack in the dome and kill a, one minion on the lane. And just the ability to do that with a model yeah. is incredible. That's that's apparently one of the answers to the, not that it needs to be answered, it's not like great, I thought the Ix attacks anything where, yeah. you know, the first thing they do is they come up here, usually with like Aqua, drop a pillar, and then make an attack. And so Akuta can actually come up here, move her illusion over here, attack that pillar, kill a minion in this lane, and now you can't taxi to that, yeah. that pillar. So it's like, it's also a little mini, it's the metagame starts to happen. And it's weird that the tools are actually there to answer things that could potentially be problematic. Yeah, right? and just on your hero, right? And I think that's where like heroes get really important. If you start losing to one thing in particular, do you have, and it reminds me of ultimately like a chess, right? Where it's like, if they move this pawn up first, yeah. I have to counter by moving Still this queen's pawn. Queen's Gambit, right? kings, yeah, king pawn, et cetera. Uh, good question here. Gunner, in-flight info was posted on FFG's website. Can we expect a live reaction stream or interview series, uh, Team Covenant? I The latter is probably less likely. It's just un, it's just unlikely. Interview stream. Yeah. yeah, and also it's just like a lot of the, honestly, a lot of the people that we um, kind of grew up together with at FFG are no longer there, right? Andrew's left, uh, which is a big one, and uh, some of the, like a lot of the games that we were covering are not happening anymore. So we'll see, but uh, we'll definitely be watching it. Maybe we'll go live afterwards and just kind of do a breakdown of yeah, or we, a lot of that that could be a good podcast too. Mm -hmm. We'll just I mean we'll see. Do we're you know, in new territory, what right? Is it, is it going to be on? Uh, I assume it's, it's on Gen Wednesday Con weekend. Or, or it's on the weekend. Well, I, no, it'd be Wednesday or Thursday. They're doing that free. Everyone's trying to do this free convention thing now. Yeah, um, I'm well, not sure. Has one of them ever worked? Uh, uh, what was the one that was doing it? Uh, there was a thousand or someone for. Was it like a dice? No, it wasn't a dice tower or board game geek con. It was one of them that happened fairly recently. Uh, Pax. I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. Also, uh, uh, main shot. John says. Yeah, I got it. What up, Galactus? We're also doing, you guys should absolutely check out the Farkham Horror, uh, Convention Farkham Horror 2020 or Farkham 2020. It's basically Far Arkham. So Mythos Busters is hosting this and hmm. it's basically a convention for uh, Arkham players and they're doing it, I think the weekend of Gen Con as well, if I'm not mistaken. It's like Gen Con's canceled. We were gonna get together and play Arkham. Yeah, Let's yeah. do it. Is that that Thursday, that, yes. literally that day. So Thursday morning from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., we're going to be uh, streaming as a part of that convention. So check that out. There's a website up. You can register. It's free as well. And then you can get updates about it. And I think what we're going to do, we'll be kind of midway through our Domage campaign at that point, assuming that things go well and we haven't <laughs> just died. Or dead. And I think we're going to take a side quest. We're going to do a side scenario that is hopefully player-created. We're trying to find right now the proper player-created scenario so we can take our Domich investigators, go to a player-created scenario, hang out with people for the convention, and then the next week we'll come back to uh, Arkham as usual. So that'd be a really fun detour and a way to get more people involved in the community side of this because I haven't taken a look at the non-official Arkham stuff, and I know that it is magnificently expansive. Uh, Gunner saying, what should I search again? It's Farkham Horror, so F in front of Arkham, Far, Farkham Horror. Uh, the looks like I the. Can, I'll find a link to. Uh, Gunner says the main events on the 29th, which is the day we're doing the Farkham Horror stream, uh, and then detailed streams tw the 30th through the second. So I, it wouldn't be a bad time right after because we'll be we're doing early on that day. Yep. With the Farkham, so we might come in after and talk about it. We'll see. I mean, it depends on what it is, right? Um, if it's something we're super excited about, that could that could be a thing. Yeah, I, d I don't even know what to expect from FFG anymore, honestly. Like, are we? Would we expect? Uh, I don't. I haven't had any inklings of like, oh, we're gonna do a big new exciting game. Have you? Like, normally there's whispers because playtesters are playtesting and they whisper to other people <laughs> and then they whisper and then eventually it's like, oh, what is that you said? P part of it though is like convention season shut down. Mm -hmm. There's a lot less in-person interaction happening, so the secrets don't travel the same. You Would know you I mean? even launch a game right now? That's the bigger question for me. Is like. As publishers, we kind of speculated up front. We know Asmodee, who publishes the games for FFG, delayed releases back in April for a couple months um, because a lot of stores had to be closed. And cases of corona are spiking right now. 
So there's a little bit of a threat of like another shutdown. So in that environment, right, like especially games that are community driven, yeah, it'd be one thing if it was if this was Champions Year. That's not that bad because you can play it solo. You can play you, it at home. You could even like market that as like, hey, you're back home. Yeah. Go fight some villains. But you know, like if I was picturing if if right, it, think about this. Think I can't imagine. This would be terrifying. Imagine if this was like uh, 2017, and you're ramping up this year to launch Destiny. Mm. Like, do you launch Destiny into this? Can you even imagine Keyforge? That'd be even worse. Because that's not even like, yeah, Destiny or Keyforge is not even possible to do online or to play solo or anything like that. Like, if anything, the ideal release would be like cooperative or solo, um, something you can do at home. Miniatures are great right now because people can paint at home. Uh, that kind of stuff, small yeah. groups that you can, like if you can have your three or four people you play with all the time, that's who you're interacting with. Yeah. Uh, but even that, it's like also, let's say months ago, there's no way you could pivot from March to August. Like by March, you're probably starting to order product. You've already designed the game, done the art, whatever. Uh, but that's where like, I, I'm curious like five years from now to hear publishers talking about this moment. Yeah, yeah. Where it's like, we had this game we were building to, and then we just paused because, like, if it involves 10, 20 people gathering locally regularly to play your game, now is not the time. Yeah. That's what Sky Terror ran into, right? That's yeah. a big problem. That's what Flesh and, and Blood Flesh running and blood. into. It's like these big problems. And hopefully we can at least help, um, you know, keep some interest and, in, you know, generate some amount of awareness for stuff that doesn't deserve to go overlooked just because of, you know, these random circumstances. There are certain things that are so good that it's like, no, we can't let this, we just can't let can't this let slide this go by, by into the COVID, you know, nothingness. But I think that's one of the things that Skyter had to his advantage is one, there's miniatures. Yeah, you got to so you immediately yeah. have that. Um, two is the online support they've been having through leagues and the deck builder. They were the so ready for that. The, they were re- really ready. The biggest thing that I think they they could and should do, and I, I hope this is something they do soon right now is if this game had a solo mode. Apparently, in, in, they're working on it. Yeah, it's like that. They said it. They said it out loud. They said it, man. That would be, if that had been in place, I think that would have made this the unquestionably perfect, like, corona game. It might get there. So to speak. Awesome, Zach. That was a great game. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching. We're going to head out of here. We're actually going to make a pretty big announcement uh, in about an hour. So maybe Stay stick around for that. for that. We're going to finish, put some... Finishing touches on that one. And then, like I said, so uh, Sky Terror, this kind of concludes the journey of discovery that we've been on it's with been this discovered. game. It's been discovered. And so now we're going to uh, take a second and pull it back and actually put together what we need to make a really good, like, how to play learning video uh, so that people, like, post into Ashes and whatnot. People understand what they need to do to get in. And there's not really, we've, we'd had like a learning early on that was us literally learning the game. And that's not super helpful if you're just like watching people for three hours like muddle through rules that they don't really know. So we're gonna try to mm. actually get a really good learning video made and produced. We might do it live. And uh, then we'll continue featuring SkyTerror on the streams as we go along. Yeah, it's easily, super good. Easily one of my favorite games. Uh, all the Into Ashes stuff's coming out soon. And then I think September-ish is when the next release is September, October is supposed to come out. So yep. I'm, and I, th- that includes new models, right? And apparently, new heroes. Yeah, apparently that's the heroes that can worship on both sides of the aisle there. Which is uh, next level. Dude, like a hero that can see an illusion and give, be projected and also shapeshift themselves or something? You can, no, I'm telling you. It's, we, we're worship boys now. That's what I'm saying. We've I think we got to the next level because yeah. we started worshiping a lot more. Um, it's not a religious conversation, by yeah, the way. Yeah, right. <laughs> LOL. Uh, but honestly, the uh, I think this game's incredible, and it's uh, it's a game you're going to see a lot on our uh, on our content. So even if we go away for a week or month or six or however long, it'll... we're, we're going to be playing on the weekends, I think. Yeah, that's the real trick right there. And the wild card Wednesdays, here we come. That's right. All right, guys, take care. We'll uh, see you around. Thanks for being here. Tomorrow we're going to be streaming again an- another game from a small publisher who's putting their heart and soul Check into it. it. Out. Really, one of the more beautiful games in the world. Yeah, uh, it's called Flesh and Blood, so we're going to be playing that tomorrow. And then Thursday, we're, th- we're not doing a throwback. We're doing Arkham because we're not going to be here on Friday. So observing the 4th on the 3rd, having a great Independence Day weekend. So stay safe out there. Hopefully we'll catch you the rest of the week. And if not, we'll see you next week.